Hello, 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 friendos. Welcome back. Happy Saturday. How are we all doing? Cheers to the weekend. Hi. Hi, Doggo. You're ready as well? Hello, Doggo. Doggo is ready, Freddy. Hi, McKay AJ. Welcome back. You're can't wait for this one. Me neither. I've been thinking about it all week. We're getting a bone at the same time. She's ready. She's telling us. Kimmers was first as always. Vune tried so hard. So hard to be first. Kudos, Vune. Kudos. How is your day going? We have a Mary Todd. We have a Dust Pirate in with us. Hi, Dust. Hello, Clemmy. Yeah, wait, I thought I was first, Kate. No, Kimmers is like literally there. As I hit the button, she is there. So good luck trying to beat Kimmers. It's a feat in itself. <laughs> Clem, spaghetti and meatballs. It's that kind of day. It's kind of chilly out. It's going to be perfect. We have three orders going out the door for our main course today and then just one order of dessert. So like three bigger cookies we will make for that. And then obviously four portions of the mains for us. So like total, we should have anywhere from seven to eight portions. We have leftover, that's a bonus. If we get seven, perfect, perfect, perfect. And yeah, I think it's gonna go great today. I'll get my list out. We have lots of good recipes linked. And I'm excited to get started. We have to be done. Excuse me, by the way. We have to be done this in like four hours and 45 minutes to go deliver to the new people. They want their delivery like much earlier than the prior people that have ordered because they are going to do something tonight. They're going to a little festival. So I was like, yeah, that's no problem. We can deliver for five. So let's get into it, I guess. Menu. That's a big one. So roasted garlic Parmesan meatballs with fresh ground pork and beef. It is a pork shoulder that we're going to cut up and then grind and then all of the trim. I'm gonna turn my music down a touch. All of the trim from yesterday's beef tenderloin from making the Wellington. So it's gonna be a beef and pork mixture and then it gets mixed with the roasted garlic, Parmesan cheese, eggs, seasoning. I don't do the breadcrumb part of the meatballs. Like we're serving it with spaghetti. So I don't see the point of like filling it with more bread than we need to, right? I just like pure protein meatballs with a couple of different seasonings. And then homemade tomato sauce and just a simple like boiled spaghetti we're gonna do today. I don't think you'll really tell the difference, honestly, between like fresh extruded and dried. So Samuel got us a very nice big can. San Marzano tomatoes. He said we can do the can comparison to my head today. So yeah, large can of tomatoes. And then I also took out from the freezer, I had this of like a pre-done tomato sauce. So we'll mix that together and make something delicious. Here is our mass amount of spaghetti. So what is this, like an eight minute cook time? Twelve minutes, it says for al dente, but we'll definitely keep our eye on it. It's massive, right? But it's handy instead of buying like a bunch of small cans. We're like, okay, we'll just use that one entire can for today. Yeah, you feel us being a uh, cold. I think it's like minus fifteen today. Oh, it did warm up a little bit, like minus seven, it says. But I think it's actually colder than that. Question dust. I may have an answer. Yeah, the meal's gonna be so good. Okay, so carrying on with our list, I always like to keep my menus balanced when I make them. So I always make sure there's a protein, a carb, and some kind of like nice green vegetable on the side to help with digestion. So veggies today are gonna be a simple salad. Uh, greens, chop up tomato, cucumber, bell pepper. We have lots of sheep feta in the fridge still. So we'll crumble some of that and we'll make like a homemade dressing with some fresh basil, maybe some lemon juice. It'll be really yummy and refreshing. And then dessert, really simple, white chocolate macadamia cookies. Nom, 
Dust went and got some Brussels sprouts, never cooked them before, was thinking of sauteing them in garlic, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, maybe salt. Keep it simple. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Mish. How are you doing? That sounds good, Dust. So definitely keep the balsamic vinegar out till the end, just because it's pretty sweet on its own. And like maybe same with the garlic, depending on the size that you do it. You want to cook the sprouts just on their own first for let's say like 10 minutes and then add those flavorings for the last 10 just so they don't burn because the sprouts need like some pretty hefty high heat cooking on them to start and that would be sad if we like burnt the garlic and the balsamic vinegar but yeah that sounds perfect i've done that before it's really really good it's like i like to play with the sweet and salty sort of thing with the sprouts you're welcome yeah, you have to show me when there's feta on the menu. This is expected. We know this. Okay, so list for today. I think we'll do the cookies first. Just get them out of the way. All of the cookies. And then from there, uh, we'll grind up the meat from there. Because that will be like the next longest process. <laughs> you guys are already misbehaving today. I can't. So grind the pork and beef. I'll put on the list after that. And then from there, yo, after the cookies, we're actually going to put roast garlics. We need to roast a bunch of heads of garlic for the meatballs. So once the cookies are out of the oven, we can get the garlic roasting. And then while it roasts, we'll grind the meats for the meatballs. And then from there, the garlic should be roasted nice and cooled off and we can do the meatball mixture together. Because once those are balled up, the way that I like to do the meatballs is we bake them on a sheet pan in the oven and then you can combine them with the sauce afterwards. So form the meatballs. After that, we should get the tomato sauce on and just simmering down. Let it cook out. It's always okay if that stuff is done early. If the tomato sauce, if you're just like hot holding it on the side, easy peasy. I would recommend that. So definitely start that earlier rather than having to wait later, like your meatballs are baked, all of that, and your sauce isn't perfect yet. Yeah, bake the balls. Bake the meatballs. It's so easy, and I find that they cook the most evenly that way. <laughs> The siblings are already having a war this morning. Okay, so after the tomato sauce, probably just get into making the salad prep. So salad, we'll wash the greens. We just got like a bag of greens from the store. It looks really good, but we'll still wash them up. And then tomato, cucumber, pepper for nice crunches. The feta. And then dressing. And then I always pack up my salads to go with the dressing on this side for sure. Okay, and then after that, so I'll do bake meatballs. While those are baking, we will boil the spaghetti noodles. And then simmer the sauce. That's really it for finishing, right? I did buy some really nice fresh basil to do for like garnish. Just tear it over the meatballs and sauce while we're plating. Definitely sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on there. So I'll just put that on the list kind of up higher. Basil, Parmesan, and we do have some extra parsley left over from yesterday. So let's just make a nice little mixture. That's simple. That's so simple to me. I'm excited to get started. Hi, Lily. How are you doing today? Just slapped with a shark. Come at him. Let's go. Stuffed shark. This is a solid plan. I think so, Clem. I think we'll be able to do like enough for seven people in the next four hours, 45 minutes. Let's do this. A full on great white shark. Okay, I'm going to have a sip of water and away we go. We're going to set up the incarcerum mixer to make our cookie dough. Hi, Vion. Hello there. 
And then if you want any recipes, not sure if anyone hit this yet, but there they are. <laughs> Warning. <laughs> Warning. I don't know. Do we have a warning command? Disclaimer. <laughs> Vune, you're still doing mod stuff. Actually, I'll just redo this on here and take the other one. Do, do, do. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, we went to Starbucks this morning for a coffee and it's always the same two ladies in there. So they're like, are you doing your show today? Like, what are you cooking? And so we told them, she's like, can you bring us snacks? Can you bring us some snacks from what you make? And we're like, hey, what time are you done your shift though? She's like one. So you know what we're gonna do? Samuel's gonna bring them uh, some cookies tomorrow. We'll go drop off some cookies to them tomorrow. They should like that. Ratchet man, thanks for the follow. Okay, move this. Did I even click on the recipes? I don't think so. Boom, boom, boom. So recipe for the cookies is from Sally's Baking Addiction, our absolute like favorite resource for most dessert recipes, I would say. They look delish. Yeah, I would do eggs, Vune. Kinda need food. What's a good substitute for chicken in salad? Hard boiled eggs or, I don't even know if you like this, but canned tuna? Egg Caesar salad it is. That'll be good. That'll be yummy. Lauren, you're lurking while getting ready for a big hike and then a special night tonight. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, sounds amazing, Lauren. I hope you have a great day. Be careful on your hike, please. Be safe. Okay, so cookies. So many good reviews. 4.8 stars from 1 in 111 reviews. Prep time, 2 hours, 15 minutes. Cook time, 12 minutes. Total time, 2 and a half hours, and it yields 30 cookies. Let's see the size of these, though. One to one and a half tablespoons of dough per cookie. I mean, it is a good reason to follow that size. I find that if you make cookies bigger, they are a bit difficult to bake. So even if we have to do like the way that I priced it was three cookies for $5, probably five of these smaller ones for $5 and that's okay. And I don't think I'm going to double the recipe at all. This is what Sally says. These white chocolate macadamia nut cookies are soft bake style with extra chewy centers. They're absolutely packed with white chocolate morsels and salted macadamia nuts. Chilling the cookie dough is imperative, so set it aside for at least two hours. Well, good thing that we have the outdoor freezer today, so that's going to be perfect. Yeah, Magic Carp is a cute fish. The cookie monster, for sure. So, flour, corn starch, which I actually didn't expect, baking soda, salt. Just get all the ingredients. Baking soda, flour. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> and then everything will be weighed out in grams. So we'll just put that up there for now. As we add stuff in, as always, whenever we make a cookie dough, we start with the butter and the sugar creaming, and then the egg after that with the vanilla, and then all of the dry goods, so the flour, stuff like that, and then lastly, the nuts and the chocolate, all the mix-ins. Your floor hit the ground. It just made sense, Lauren. It just made sense. <laughs> My floor hit the ground. Wait, what is going on here? Okay, we need butter, brown sugar, white sugar, vanilla. My floor hit the ground. 
<laughs> I'm dead right now. <laughs> that just made my entire day, thank you. Yeah, blink twice, please. Are we okay? We do have a backup surgeon, it's true. Just in case it's needed. Okay, we got Aggies back here. I already brought them out a bit earlier. Hi, Darth for Baka. Welcome in. How was the rest of your stream yesterday? And thank you for stopping by today. We're just getting started. We are going to be making some white chocolate macadamia cookies. Butter. Grab a couple containers for measuring stuff. Maybe a teaspoon and tablespoon measure. And away we go. Ceviche de Faso. Hello, how are you doing today? It was great. The pie was marvelous. That's why we came over. We were like, yo, he's making banoffee pie. That's like one of mine and my husband's favorites. I'm glad it turned out good. Cause like not a lot of people know about that one, I don't think. So it's good to show the world. Okay, I think we have all we need. Let us begin with... Whoa, she actually didn't really measure this one in grams. Oh yes, she did. 170 grams of unsalted butter. She says melted and slightly cooled. What if we just soften it? Sally. This must be one of her like first recipes she did, I feel, just by the way that it's worded and typed out. First time having it and making it, it was delish. Yeah, definitely a make again, right? And then, so myself, I was a pastry chef once upon a time for a restaurant and I transformed the pie into like a jar dessert. So I did the layer of like digestive cookie, then a banana custard, and then a caramel layer, and then the cream and like chocolate. Really fun way to do that too. Like pack it to go in just a little jar. Quick question. Do you get access to plantain leaves over there or is it too cold? We get some kind of leaf. I've seen it before at like the superstore here, Lily. I can't remember what the type of leaf was though. Hello, Ceviche de Faso. Greetings from Argentina. What are we cooking? We are cooking spaghetti and meatballs today. I typically cook like a grandma, so we make as much as we can from scratch. And it's okay, you just do your best and I'm sure we'll be able to figure it out. Who is from Denmark? Mish is from Denmark. I'm from Canada. Okay, 170 grams. Soften it up. And I'll start mixing with the sugars. 210, overshot. Now where are we at? 184, closer. That probably will do it. We'll go with that because sometimes we can't get it all out. And then let's change to this. Let's switch it up. So I like to do just 30 second increments when trying to soften up butter. I guess we're done with this for now. So I'll pack this up. Might need a little bit later. Yeah, we're from the other part of the world. Totally. It's like one of the best parts of Twitch is meeting all the different people from all over. You're gonna lurk making some garlic infused olive oil and butter. Sounds amazing. Once again, thanks for stopping by. And friends, if you haven't yet, go give Darth for Baca a follow. They're another food and drink streamer here on Twitch. Whoa. Okay, I guess this is our semi <laughs> melted and softened butter here. <laughs> I'll just get it a spatula. I'm just going to give it like a mix because this part, this chunk right here is still a bit tough. 
You want to make it nice and easy for the mixer. Oh no, Lauren, like your charger for the phone? Yeah, just blame bonk. Blame bonk. Okay, I'm gonna pop this in. You got extras, yeah, always, right? You never know. Mmm. I love this cookie. Like, not a lot of people make it, the white chocolate macadamia, but it's so dang good. It's like one of the few things I really, really enjoy white chocolate in. Maybe another thing I like white chocolate in is raspberry white chocolate scones. Might have to put that one on the list. Okay, let's just grab a little container to measure the sugar in. Next one. Measure this together. We need 150 grams of brown sugar. I use a light brown sugar. And then we're gonna do 150 grams of white sugar. It's your favorite one, Dust. Oh, man. Maybe we'll have to put this one in the cookie box for this month. I just might. I was thinking of doing cookies that I really liked, like for my birthday almost. Whoa. Just a little bit less, like 10 grams less. Just use a spoon to scoop it out. There we go. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, you guys should actually be getting your boxes soon again. Whoever got into it for February. Pour some sugar on me. Just do this. Brown sugar in. Next one, white sugar. Cookies. Just want to start a cookie business. Been loving it. Boom, boom. Okay, now we'll just move the scale down here and I'll keep measuring as we go along. But we can mix together now. <laughs> Clem. Turn this on and start creaming it up. Until, well, it looks creamy. That's when you know. So then, how many eggies? One large egg and one yolk. Okay. Okay, Lauren, have a wonderful hike. And maybe we'll see you later. Be safe out there. I'm just gonna separate this other egg over the compost for to get the yolk. Got it. Wash my handles. Rinse, rinse, rinse. Oh, that's looking good. The butter and sugar, like really good. Okay, we'll stop that and just give it a little scrape around the edge. Trips on the way out. <laughs> Lauren. 
Don't trip. Don't fall. It's getting creamy. Scrape that and we'll let it go just a little bit longer. Next one, so the vanilla, we'll go in with the egg and then we'll measure the flour after. Really whip this up right now. Yeah, Luna will protect her. Oh, loons. It's looking good. Turn it off. One more scrape before we add the eggs. Boom. So for the sprouts, just cut off the ends and remove any sketchy bits and then rinse them. I don't usually rinse them because like not much gets inside there does. It's almost like a cabbage, right? Just pick off the outer leaf and then I cut them in half. But yeah, pick the leaves off before you cut them. Otherwise, you're going like, to be picking like double time. And hi, Magic Cookie. How are you doing today? I'm just going to actually read this through. I mean, I know how to make cookies, but sometimes they switch up the steps. Yep, so egg, egg yolk, vanilla. She actually didn't use a mixer for this to make hers, but I think it's easier to use, so to each their own. If you don't have a mixer, you can still make this cookie dough though, so that's cool. So I use this vanilla bean powder. Been loving that in my baking. Do you like half a teaspoon of this? Little goes a long way. And then we'll let that stuff mix really well. Hi, ceviche, welcome back. Okay, that'll go. And then next up, all of the dry stuff. So 265 grams of flour. go grab a scoop just do a big scoop in here just an all-purpose flour got it This should start to look nice and like light and fluffy. I'm just gonna do one scrape quickly. A pastry chef. Yeah, Dusty said he doesn't speak that good of English. So we're gonna just make do. We're gonna make it work. Yeah, I've been a pastry chef before. It was really fun. I just basically was forced into that role because no one else wanted to do that when we opened the restaurant. Pastry. Vanilla bean powder, Wall Street Brian. Do you use the same amount as a liquid? You use half. So that's why I like using it. And also it saves a lot of space in the kitchen using a dried product instead of having a big bottle. Do I study? I graduated from culinary arts in 2013. So like nine years ago. And then I've been working in the industry ever since. Okay, next one teaspoon of cornstarch, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt. Into the flour. You're about to do the same? Awesome. Well, let me know if you have any other questions can help you along the way. I will say like the programs around the world with the culinary schools are, they're all a lot different. So some are more expensive than others and some teach different stuff too. 
Fat Matt loves spaghetti. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Spaghetti is amazing, and so are you. Thank you. Thank you for that. You're setting us up for success today. I'm going to do the baking soda first. It doesn't really stick in here. The cornstarch is interesting. Maybe it just helps the fat stay in the cookie more because like white chocolate has a high fat content. Is that it? Yeah, I will say like culinary school was some of the funnest time of my life. Okay, and then after this, 210 grams of white chocolate, 120 grams of chopped macadamia. Uh, let's do a scrape around the edge before we add this. And then I think we'll just go chill the dough from here and then scoop it out after it's been chilled because it looks very soft right now. Hi, FCB. How's the day? Trying to guide this in without spilling too much. Welcome, welcome. Just mix this about halfway, I would say. Don't want to over mix this at all. Just get a bit of the dry stuff worked in. Like, let's stop there. Next step. This is what we're using for our white chocolate today. Calibo. Nice big bag. Yeah, it was flour, cornstarch, baking soda. Oh, and salt. Don't forget the salt. A half teaspoon. So I'll just do like a little pinch around. Don't forget the salt in your baking. Okay, next. Two hundred and ten grams of white chocolate chippies. And then we'll measure out the macadamia nuts, but we have to do a quick little chop on them just so they disperse better throughout the cookie dough. Maybe we should do a cookie pull. Everyone's favorite cookie. This one is like high up there for me. White chocolate meh. Okay, move this over a moment. Just pour this out. Chop it up a bit. Make a list and you'll throw up a pull. You can come up with the list, Dust. I know that you know cookies. I won't be upset with any that you choose. It's just something fun. What is a typical plate here in Canada? Oh, I think it depends on where you live. Hi, Dad. How are you doing? Thank you for the 44 months in a row. How's the day going? It's going good. I was going to say, can we FaceTime tomorrow? We're going to FaceTime tomorrow after stream. I'm going to call you guys up. And thanks for the follow, friend. Ceviche de Fazo. So yeah, Canada is a really big country. And I would say like how you eat depends on where you live in the country. Like, for example, we used to live on the West Coast and like 
our diet consisted of a lot more seafood and stuff like that. And maybe a little bit more veggies too, I would say. Now we are living back in the prairies for a bit and like maybe a bit more heavy food, not as much seafood because we're away from the coast. And then I think the farther you go up north, like the more wild game meat and stuff you eat like that. But it also depends on like your family. Because if you have a family with hunters and like people hunt, then you're for sure going to eat more wild game. Yeah, our day is just kind of getting started. Got a big dump of snow again yesterday. It feels nice though. It's cozy when it snows, not too cold. Okay, now the cookie mix-ins. Nom. They do raise cattle in Alberta and it's some of the best beef in Canada. Some of the highest quality beef in the entire country. So yeah, we you might have noticed that we maybe eat a bit more beef since we've been back here. But it is a bit less expensive, I think, compared to where we were before. So that makes sense too. How much snow? We almost got a full foot yesterday, like overnight. Started at, I think, 4, 4.30 on Thursday night. And then by the time Friday morning came around, there was straight up like a foot almost. It was wild. Really like, super fluffy. It's nice. What is a typical fish? Like here, most people, the fish is pejere. I don't even know those. So we have salmon, halibut, cod, snapper, uh, for like mollusks and stuff like that, clams, mussels, people eat octopus, crab, shrimp, all of those sorts of things. So yeah, lots of seafood available. Have we had a Wagyu brisket? No, Mary. And I don't know if I'll ever afford that. Okay, so just mix this until it's looking combined. I'm gonna stop there. Otherwise it gets too thick and my mixer will maybe break. That's it. We can mix it the rest of the way if you feel like you need to with just a spatula. Let's just take this apart. Always unplug it, safety first. The snapper fish. That's a good one for like fish tacos, stuff like that. But then we also have like freshwater fish too. Like pickerel, jack, pike, walleye. What else? There's a couple of bass fish that are freshwater. Sturgeon. Scrape, scrape, scrape this off. That was so easy to bring together. I can see why you wouldn't actually even... Ah, look it, it's gonna fall through. <laughs> Need a mixer. <laughs> Hello? Get back in there. It's trying to sneak away. Trout, good one. Thanks, Twitch Blackmore. That's like one of the better ones. Your store had some, Mary? Oh shoot, I gotta answer this. Thanks, Dust. Guys, answer the poll. What's your favorite cookie? Out of the ones listed. Those are good ones, Dust. Wait, it ended? Chocolate chip one. 44%, good one. How much was it, Mary? The Wagyu brisket. That's wild. All I can say is that whoever buys that cut of meat, meat, don't mess it up. Do not wreck that brisket. Okay, so 
Now we're just going to wrap this up and let it chill. And then in like an hour and a half or so, we'll ball it up. Get ready for baking. That's it. Easy mode. Done with this. A cut of me. Shh, you weren't supposed to hear that. <laughs> that was supposed to get edited out, Dust. The editor must be sleeping. <laughs> Shoot, he caught me. <laughs> I want that to be a new animal. I eat meef. <laughs> oh no. Bushkari, yeah, bunk. Thank you, Slothman. 15 months. We're having a party. How have you guys been over there? Thank you for all of the support over the last 15 months. I know that we've inspired you to spread the deliciousness. And I also want to welcome in Hello Can One Do a Thing as well as Jelly Filled. Hi, friends. We're all filing in. Okay. Just going to do some plastic on this, I think. Wrap it nice and tight and then put it in the outdoor blast chiller. Welcome to Canada. Forgot to look at the mount of weight on it, Mary, but the one was 57 US dollars. Yo, that's cheap. $57 for a Wagyu brisket? Or was it like pretty small? Because we usually get them like minimum 12 pounds. Put this stuff away. Let's go. Now I'm getting pumped. Thank you, FCB. Welcoming in another person to the kitchen crew. Ceviche de Faso. So they're from Argentina, they let us know, and they're interested in going to culinary school. So I think that our worlds collide for sure. Welcome in. Trying to buy a UTV, a side-by-side -side. Oh, for the farm. So research is just, ugh, yeah, I feel you, but you have to do the best research, right? Got to make sure you get the best thing for you. Yeah, why put anything in the fridge? It's the blast chiller. It's here, Bonk. We're back at it. And thank you, FCB, for the thousand bitlies. 922,201 out of one million? <laughs> What? We broke it. Let's go. Yeah, I'll be right back. It's chilly. Thank you. Okay, let's welcome in everyone to the crew. We have a lovely Ellen. It's the B-O-F-H, Pepto Gizmo, Cecia Dahlia, and Pork Chapu. Hi, Diamond List, how are ya? Okay, first thing on the list, complete. Let's cross it off. Uh, I did put roast garlic while we bake cookies, but I think I'm just going to turn on the oven now and we're going to get the garlic roasting. That's our next step here. That's for the meatballs. Yay! Sweet! Bonk, you set it off. Thank you for the 369 bits. These just blew in the window with the blustery rain shower we're having. You can have them though. <laughs> oh no! And thank you, FCB, gifting the sub to Fat Matt Loves Spaghetti. Welcome to the crew, friend. Feel free to ask away any questions. This is like an educational focus stream, so we all try and learn together. Okay, I'm going to turn this on. We will roast the garlic. I like to do like 375 Fahrenheit. Not too high, not too low. And usually at that temperature, 
it will take anywhere from half an hour to 45 minutes. Thanks, Dust. Thank you for the 200 biddies. We're already at a level four. That was like yesterday's stream. Before we even showed face, we had a hype train go in and like our sub goal complete. So true, 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 true to all of you. That's what you get. Okay, all of the garlic. I'm gonna do like five heads. Five heads of garlic roasted. Cause well, it's sprouting again anyways. Trash garlic. Whoa, that one is seen better days, I think. Madame, how's Madame doing? Hello. And then I'll get a baking pan for the garlic. Something that they will nestle all together in there nicely. Whoa, this other head of garlic is for sure sprouted as well. It's like coming out the end. This upsets me. I'm upset. What is going on? Cookie, thank you for the 1,230 biddies. And Slothman gifting another, not even five, but six. That's like a two-hander. <laughs> Daily sub goal, it's been met. Guys, thank you so much for that. I've barely even done anything. Welcome to the crew, Game Brain Media, Jason Sipe, who's another streamer, Chaos the Gardener, Drudox, Feisty, and Micro Raptor. Amazing. Just maxing it out. Yeah, no big deal. Bonk! Okay, where did I put my knife? I will bring over the paring knife too. There we go. Thank you so much, Mr. Slothman. 11 gifted subs to the channel. And Blackmore with the resub as well. <laughs> Thank you for the three months, friend. Get them in, get it going. So prepping these up, I'm gonna just chop off the little bit of the top to just open this up slightly. Yeah, see it like it's all sprouting. Can we not be so rattly back there? We just take it down a notch back there, oven. Oven's getting pumped too. So then we just take off. I know it's sprouting, but that's why we're roasting it. Just take off a lot of the loose outer leaves. It'll make it easier to squeeze the garlic clove out later on. Wow. I'll take my sprouts with a side of garlic, please. My face. <laughs> this is how I really feel about this garlic. Just pack them in there. We're gonna just stuff this roasting pan full. The more, the merrier. Uh oh, that one kind of fell apart. Put that over there. Garlic. The garlics. These are going to be so good. Some of the best meatballs ever. With full roasted garlic cloves and big pieces of Parmesan in there. There we go. We're packed in. Should we just do eight? Might as well do one more if we can fit it. A little guy. Fish little guy. So this also means that we're gonna end up with some more roasted garlic oil in our life. Om nom nom. So we cover these in a bit of oil to help them roast along. Just put all the fluff 
in the compost. <laughs> it doesn't want to go in. How much is gas in Alberta right now? I think it's at a dollar fifty or a dollar sixty, madam. Let's just say too much. And then coming up the next two weeks, we kind of talked about this yesterday with everyone on stream. Since the price of everything in the world is going up except for all of our wages, we are going to be doing some budget cooking the next two weeks. I feel like it's needed. Uh, yeah, we just need to know how to like cook with some canned food, stuff like that, just in case anything happens and well, we run out of money or something, right? So budget cooking is coming up. I'm super excited because it'll be a challenge for me. Give me a sec. Stop it. Goodness oven. Bean Town Red, it's too much? Never too much. It's never too much. Thanks, friends. Level five completed. Thank you to everyone who contributed. 14 subs to the channel, 2,569 biddies. Thank you. I'm gonna put some hypes in chat for that one for sure. Absolutely crushing me with the love today. I don't know if you told me yet, madam. I don't think we chatted since the last time we talked on Discord. So I like to do, I mean, every now and then I kind of switch up the oil that I infuse. Today I'm going to do some olive oil. What about this? So the garlic infused olive oil we can repurpose in the salad dressing later today. Winning. So just drizzle a little bit over each head of garlic to kind of moisten it. You can tell it's cold in here because the oil is like lumpy, but I like it because it makes it easy for pouring actually. Perfect. And then whenever the oven is hot, we'll put those in just like that. And we'll set a 30 minute timer. Check them. They should be nice golden brown at that point and nice and softened as well. Gonna put one more thing away. You got a permanent teaching contract? Yeah, congratulations for sure. It's not called tenored there. It's permanent, but it means the same thing. That's so exciting. That's really, really good. I'm happy for you. Okay, next one. Let's prep up our meat grinder. So we need to put all of the metal parts in the freezer before we use it. And then from there we can get into cutting up the meats. So this is what we're gonna use today. It goes on my stand mixer, the one that we just used to make the cookie dough. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you know that your internet friends are not connected to any of the other real life friends. Just tell everyone that way. Yeah, that's got to be such a good feeling. Okay, and then for the meatballs today, we'll do like a medium fine grind. Nice. Yeah, your coworkers are like trying to bug. You're like, I can't say. That is what we need. So, main part, auger. This holds everything together. This is the blade that cuts the meat through, and then this is the size that it's going to come out for the mince. This is the one step down from the finest. We can just put that in a container to chill. And then later on when we set it up, that's the feed and the plunger. Just put that to the side for now. Okay, so you just don't know yet which school you'll be at. Well, that's cool, though. Okay, 
Okay, BRB. And then we'll get into this first. This is our pork shoulder. We're just gonna make a bunch of the grind. And then whatever is extra, I'll just vacuum seal and freeze. I was thinking I would probably use it for Nike's meatloaf redemption. Depending on what's left. One more sip of water. That's just the, what you hear from the oven behind me, hey? Wild. Okay, for sure, scimitar today, boning knife. We'll put it on the steel one more time. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. It's actually a bit hard to like steal that massive knife. Yay, that's so good, Mary. I love making people's day. Make it your mission to make someone else's day better. That's the motto. Okay, big cutting board again as well, same as yesterday. Clear it off, open it up. I don't know why my camera is like sideways. Maybe it's just my cutting board, actually. I think it was me. It was me, guys. Back at it. You got distracted mid-typing. That's allowed. It happens. Okay, so we're gonna open this up. And then we're gonna start dicing it like one to two inch cubes for the meat grinder. Got the garbage by me. This doesn't look super juicy and it is still like a little bit frosty, which will actually be so good for grinding today. Really nice and clean grind. The colder all of your stuff is, if you're gonna grind the meat, the better. Won't have any mushy pieces. Probably just put this to this side to hold the cubes. And then am I able to get this out? I really squeezed it into the bag when I vacuum sealed it. So a whole pork shoulder just deboned. They just took the shoulder blade out. It's like suctioned in there. Howl. I was gonna say, $10 bet that the dog comes out. Oh, look. <laughs> look who shows up. Really? You're a meat dog? I think I also cut this in half. Yes. Okay. So that's a bit of frostage just on the inside, but that is okay since we're gonna be grinding it. One thing I'm just gonna look over doesn't look like we have to trim anything off. What? Chi Delta, a two month resub. These ones are special. That means they've only been here for a limited amount of time chat. Whatever you guys did, you sold them, they came back. Thanks for the two month resub. Not surprised we got some good looking meat. Yeah, a whole pork shoulder deboned. I like using this for grind because the pork shoulder has good flavor. Uh, really nice dark meat and then just a bit of marbling so it's not too fatty of a mix. I don't think we're gonna have to really trim much. Just gonna look for like any veins or stuff like that that we maybe don't want in the mix. But otherwise, there's not a ton of connective tissue that I'm seeing to clean out. 
So what we can do, I think I'll cut it this way. We're just gonna do one inch thick slices to start with the scimitar. You can see how well this knife works for these big cuts of meat. That's why we have it. And then we can also see the cross section. Oh, that looks so good. That is going to be one juicy meatball. I just want to throw that on the grill like that. So yeah, we get high quality beef and pork where we're at. Like we're in the middle of farmland. I've never had any issues since we came back. Okay, so those are all prepped. We'll just put them to this side now that we have the slices. Do the same thing with this other side, and then we'll do more slice and then dice. Right? Just pop that right on the grill. Like, look at that fat cap. <sighs> and, like, interesting thing about pork shoulder is you can cook it like a steak. And, like, it's not super chewy if you do that. It's kind of magical. Couple more slices. And then hopefully our oven's ready. Put that garlic in to roast. Yeah, I'm excited to see how quick we can get through today's menu. Should go really, really easy. Planned a nice, simple, easy one. The fat just like cooking into the meat, basically basting its way through. Okay, that chunk, it's okay if it fell off. We'll just deal with that on its own. And like that fat on the top cap is the good fat that you want to hold on to. We don't want to trim that off. Okay, done with the boning knife. I I'm going to just quickly rinse my hands in my soapy water bin and get that garlic roasting first before we go any farther. Wash, wash, wash. Yeah, that's where good doggos stay. Good girl. Good girl. She's like, yeah, you can ship that right into my mouth too, Kate. So 375 Fahrenheit is the oven temperature. And then let's do a 30 minute timer. Do you render your excess fat, Chi Delta? I do keep like little containers of bacon fat, pork fat, and like usually a chicken fat in the fridge. So to answer your question, yes. Yeah, a lot of people are like kind of weirded out by cooking with animal fats just because of what they've been told from the news and stuff. But it's actually really great to use. It's not any worse for you than any other fats, honestly. So I'll deal with these pieces that are kind of falling apart already. That's just where the shoulder blade was. You can't help that from happening. And then just as we are putting the stuff in the grinder, you want to make sure that you're adding fat and meat together so that we don't have to over mix it later on when we're bringing the meatball mix together. Is Kiwi gone? I'm not sure. She never said she was. She might just be doing something currently, Vian. So now I'm gonna cut this into three pieces. Just down this way. Insidious one, thank you for that follow. Welcome in. 
Hope the weekend's treating you well. Yeah, I cannot even recall the last time I had spaghetti and meatballs in my life. This is going to be something special. She's having dinner. We're just interrupting Misha's dinner. She's like, what do you guys want? Just let me eat. <laughs> Insane looking. This looks so good. Here we go. Here we go, chat. We got Ray Ling in here saying they stop eating meat because I think it is immoral. I'm going to trim a little bit of this fat off. I think there's a lot more immoral things that go on in the world than eating meat. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. Hi, Tika Sella. How are you? I just took off some of that fat because I noticed that the mix was looking a bit fatty. And like, there is a limit to how fatty you want your grind mixture. There is a limit. Stay within it. This one is okay. It got a bit thinner, so I feel good about this now. One more. Yum. What kind of percentage do I like? I like a bit fattier. Like 75, 25. <laughs> it's true, Vyun. <laughs> you do you. You do you. Dust is not having it. Thank you for the lurk, Sothman. And then once again, thank you for all of your contributions today. Doing great today, T. Casella. Had to do a bit of yard work before the rain comes in, but you've been listening. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. You know what? I'm going to trim out this little bit of fat. It's just like the softer fat that doesn't render as nice. So I'm picking and choosing the pieces that I'm trimming out as we go along. That's why I keep telling you what I'm doing. <laughs> Dust is like, nah. It's not happening. I think they just woke up today and chose violence. I don't think it would even matter what we said, guys. That person just was not actually listening. They have their opinion and that's it. Like I was just thinking in my own head, I'm like this, as far as like meat practices go, like this is not even bad. Things that do bug me about the meat industry is like all of the weird like ground meats. Cause like we always talk about how many like pieces of animals did that come from? Like, yeah, there's a lot wrong with the industry also pertaining to the produce side of things too though. So like we're always gonna be able to find things that are wrong, 
But then, well, it's also up to us to like make the changes to make things better. Not just talk about it, but actually take action. That's all I'm gonna say. That's the most mature thing I can say. This was a entire pork shoulder green fang. It was deboned already, so just the shoulder blade is out. We've been chunking it up. Hello, Stuart Zollner, welcome. Yeah, exactly. Like we like to have discussions here, not just like a one-sided thing. Yeah, Green Fang. Honestly, since I started grinding my own meat, I just can't even bring myself to like buy any store-bought stuff. But that's still like good that you make your own meatballs though, because not everyone even does that to start with. Like as long as we're just actively always trying to be a little bit better, that is not too much to ask. Okay, I'm gonna go grab the beef from the fridge. We'll get into that next. <laughs> Cheat Delta, I'm sorry. <laughs> I came here after lunch, Kate, and you still have me. I'm starving. Yes, Vion. It is absolutely... Sorry, wrong button. It is absolutely, like, I can't handle the flavor and the texture, but you can buy pre-made, pre-cooked meatballs. <laughs> no. <laughs> Put the nuts back in the freezer while we're at it. Doggo's helping me get the beef. Beef for grind. Om nom nom. And I'm smelling some roasted garlic in my life. That's right, Green Fang. Very old school Italian. I was gonna say, I'm almost surprised that they don't do like the pork beef veal mixture that I see in a lot of recipes. So this is all from yesterday. All of the off cuts from the beef tenderloin. Most of it is really nice and lean, but there are a couple nice fatty chunks that are gonna add some flavor in. Om nom nom. Put that away after. Yeah, you're a beef dog. That's right. You need this? Okay, come over here and sit. Okay, that's it now. Yeah, sometimes it's about the best you can do in a small amount of time, totally. We have something like that, Vune. It's not for pasta or anything. They're called fricadellin. They might be the ancestor to the hamburger. I've heard of that. We've had the pre-made meatballs. I swear there's some gelatin binder. Yeah, weird texture, right? It's like, ee, like almost like a bouncy ball. <laughs> I'm sorry if I ruined those for anyone just now. I'm sorry. Hello, mountain man. This one, I'll just kind of chunk roughly up. So it's kind of thin. And then as we put the meats through the grinder, we're also going to add the beef and the pork together as best as we can. So you get the most even mix. Like I said, the less that we have to work this meat, for the meatballs later, the better and juicier they're gonna end up. She's not hard to please. Nope, she doesn't ask for much, Green Fang. That's all good. Two pieces of pork belly to thaw. Holy, my chat is going insane today. Trying to keep up with you guys. I'm loving this. Wonder how long it's going to take. Yeah, two days in the fridge. And then if you leave it out one day, it'll only take one day in the fridge. Put some cheese in the meatballs. That's what we're going to do, Chi Delta. That's my favorite as well. 
So I do the Parmesan cheese and roasted garlic cloves and then egg and seasonings. I actually don't do any filler with like bread or milk. Thank you. Yeah, we're prepping right along. We started the stream by making up the cookie dough so that it could rest. We have the garlic roasting right now while we are prepping our stuff for the grinder. Okay, so that's that. So it's like two to one, it looks like, for the pork to beef ratio. I'm just gonna move this over. Try and sneak this up and almost do like a mix up. Or just as we add this, I'll take a little pile of the beef, little pile of the pork together. What is the part of beef that I like most? Oodstmer is asking. Hmm. Man, that's a hard one. I am not really picky about beef. It's like my absolute favorite protein to eat. And then I always like treat it very special just because it is more expensive. Um, I don't know, the animals are special in themselves. But yeah, that's really hard. Like a good brisket smoked is amazing. How about a short rib braise? Like melt in your mouth, delicious. Or like sometimes we just like to throw a ribeye on the grill and have a quick steak, right? So I don't think I can answer which cut of beef is my favorite. I just love beef. Ravy only. Who touch my spaghetti? We make a the spaghetti and a spicy meatball today. <laughs> Tika Sella, thank you for gifting the sub to Stuart Zollner as well. You've already gifted 23 subs to the channel. Thank you. Does Asher demand pets and attention? So every day after stream, we have to, or I have to go over and then we do a run around the yard after. That's what she needs. Okay, just gonna be right back with this. We'll go wash it. We're done with the cutting. And then I think we'll check the garlic cause I can smell it. And that usually tells me that it is done. smell sweet roasty garlics and then I'm gonna wash my hand while I'm here or my hands oops the zopa fell over I'll just use this cloth. Let's see. Sugar skull leggings. Yeah, they're so comfy. You made your first prime rib for Christmas. You were nervous, but you killed it. See? Just gotta believe in ourselves a bit more. Whoa, whoa. Things are falling out. It's okay. Okay, a little bit longer still. Just the smell has permeated. I almost just lost the whole roasting pan. Thank goodness that uh, the scene was there. Would have seen terrifying things. Yeah, this is the halfway point. That's the halfway point. Yeah, prime rib, like you can always get like a smaller chunk. You don't have to get the entire prime rib to buy. Just get a small chunk for yourself and you can cook it the same way, Dust. Get like three or four meals out of it. That's a, our convection oven, green fang. If I do this, you can have a peek at it. Boom, boom. It's just right there. So yeah, the fan is quite powerful. Really wish you could use your smoker. Are you not allowed to? Okay, so grind pork and beef. I guess we will now set up the grinder. Might as well, since this is all ready to go. And it's nice and cold still. That's the important part. 
back to the mixer. <laughs> Use it in the shower. It's loud like a Traeger loud. Oh, I believe it. I believe that. It is one of the more powerful, like, compact ovens that we've ever used. Okay, I'll be back momentarily to finish setting this up with you guys. Take this away. We don't need it. Come on, girl. Good Astra. Good Astra. Okay, so we had these pieces chilling outside, all of the metal bits for the grinder. Oh yeah, nice and cold. So that goes on first, twist that. Your favorite is brisket, Mary. I will say like brisket was the most surprising cut of beef having it done on the smoker or even just like roasted perfectly was like whoa i didn't know what to expect we'd risk it for the brisket thank you so turn that on and now this and then we can use this to put the grind into Prime rib is such a toss-up piece of meat for me. It's good with a yummy horseradish sauce, but I always think, why didn't you just slice it and grill this beauty, right? Got options. Okay, now I will plug this in since we have it set up. Boom. And then this gets turned this way so that we can feed. Feed it through. Go all the way back this way with it, as far as I can. Feed tray. Honestly, never use the plunger, so I'll just put it to the side. And then usually when I'm feeding the meat in, I will use a glove is what I do. One last thing. Okay. And then I always do just a test run to make sure we set this up properly. If you hear we weird metal grinding sounds, turn off the mixer. It's happy. Away we go. Just gonna hold this. Oh, what is going on here? You heard that? I don't know if it was because I was just running it without the thing, but now I'm upset. Sometimes it'll do that if it's like too cold, but I don't think that's the case. Gonna go game for a bit, enjoy. Yeah, cause you just like physical pain, right? It's so bad. It's so dang bad. Okay. Why? Oh, so last time we figured out that I just turned it too tight on. What if I just do that? It's got like a safety on it. Once we fill it, it'll stop the metal on metal sound. 
Away we go. Let us begin. So feed the beef and pork together. That's funny how like some sounds bug people more than others. Some people can't do the metal like sounds. Some people can't do like scratchy, like ice frosty sound. Holy, this is gonna be a good mix. You have very sensitive hearing. Oh, interesting. Yeah, nails on chalkboard too. That's looking good. A volume control? Oh, like here you're saying dust, but like not in the world when you're like surprised by a crazy sound, right? Okay, that's just a chunk of fat I'm gonna not use. It's quite a fatty mix we made, but I like it. Earplugs, yeah, the jump scares, oh my goodness. This almost looks like uh, beef just coming out of the grinder. Just like straight beef with how dark the pork is. Wow. Moist meatballs for the world today. How are we doing? 1.30. I think we're doing great for timing. After this, I think the garlic will be done. We can let that cool. Get the Parmesan cheese grated up to put in here. The eggs crack, stuff like that. Just gonna work some of this, or we want it to fall. We like the way it looks when it falls on its own. And I think we might get the tomato sauce simmering on the side as well on the stove top. Have a couple of things working always, right? Just gonna try and even that out a bit. Hi, Deep True. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. This Saturday is going good so far. We're just doing our meat grind for the meatballs. We got our garlic roasting in the oven for them too. Found one more fat chunk that I don't think we need. This is heavy holding this as I fill it. Yeah, like I noticed all of my garlic was trying to sprout again. So I was like, oh, I guess we're gonna do some roasted garlic. What do I like to do with roasted garlic? Meatballs. Yeah, the pork is so dark in color that it looks like beef. Just lovely. I 
And then any extra grind that we think we'll need, we'll just vacuum seal. Save it, vacuum seal it for use another time. Heard a lot of people just having roasted garlic on its own. Yeah, like people can take the roasted garlic clove since it's nice and soft and you can spread it onto bread and eat it that way. Got options. When you order from Pizza Pizza, yeah, Sam told me about that chain. We don't have it here where we're at. I heard about it, it's in Ontario. That was one of my go-to adding toppings too. Some roasted garlic if the pizza place has it. So dang good. We're getting there. Big Ontario pizza spot. Here, I think instead of Pizza Pizza, it's Pizza 73. Roasted to put into mashed taters. Good one, Tika Sella. Really, really good one. Mountain Man was in Ontario. That's another fat chunk we don't need. They have good wings. That's always good to know. The Blaze pizza chain has roasted garlic where you're at, Bonk. So, so good. Okay, this is the last little bit. Let's not let it fall off to the side. Wow, it's always deceiving, right? What we start with and then what we end up with. So much meats. Lauren went for a long hike, she said. Get in there. Okay, done with this. How long on my garlic? I think I might just turn the oven off. So I feel like that stuff is probably good. Okay, now we can use the plunger just to finish is what I typically do. Yeah, Edmonton's pizza, pizza equivalent is pizza 73. Four, seven, three, seven, three, seven, three. <laughs> commercials, how they stay in your head. Okay, I don't see nothing in there. Work this last little bit out. And then I can take my glove off. It's actually so easy to clean the grinder. Yeah, okay, so timer's going off anyways. I will grab this stuff. So where the garlic sprouted, sorry, the steam just kind of hurt my eye a bit opening. Where the garlic sprouted, Looks like it kind of got like a bit dark, but the rest of the clove is good. So we'll just kind of pick those little bits off. And then this is going to beep when I turn it off. It's okay. I'll be all right. Okay. Things are working. Run some bread through. It's easier to clean. Yes. If I had bread, I would. But usually this one is really nice and clean when we are done so first step always unplug before you start taking things apart go boom 
And then usually I just take off this whole piece. Papa John is a Calgarian. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so since I started grinding meat with this piece, I think I've had it for like at least four years since I, right? We got it while I was streaming. So around four years, I've never bought ground meat since then. I really like it because you can control what's in your grind, right? You don't get like weird gristly bits. You know it's only from one cut of meat, not like multiple animals. These are the things I think of. So now we just untwist the best that we can. Use our muscles. There we go. This comes off. And then the thing about this all being metal is you don't want to rinse it with hot water at first, right? Because then it's just going to stick everything onto there. Sometimes we'll find stuff like that in there, but look at how clean that is. That's how you know you had everything at a good temperature too. The colder, the better. And now this just pops out. If we look inside here, there's not a ton of stuff even around the outside. So that's a good sign as well. And then let's deal with the blade and the auger. And then we will find little bits like this. So things that you can't really stop if you have a metal meat grinder is like the metal grinding together, right? It's doing that the whole time. Well, at least we can pick that out because I doubt that I do that for the grocery store grinds. So like you're actually eating a bit of metal if they don't pick that out. Kind of crazy. And then if we open this up, so the blade does a really good job. Like it's almost a second set of eyes because it'll take all the stringy sinewy bits we don't want in the grind anyways, kind of wrap it around there. And then same with this stuff. Like, look at this. We wouldn't want that in the grind because it's so hard. And then that's all that's wasted. So like a tablespoon of stuff that we wouldn't want anyways. Easy mode. So now I usually just go soak this all together, submerged in the sink in like a lukewarm water with soap and water. And then later, once it's all softened up, I'll give it all a rinse and like a very big clean. Be right back. Hi, Gail. Yes, yeah, do all beef. That's like what we do at work too. Everything is like halal. And Julio Calderon, thank you for the follow. Just run a magnet over the meat. I'm not sure about that one. soapy soap. While I'm here, I'll wash my hands. Go, go, go. Awesome. Everything is submerged. Okay, so let's just put this to the side for now because we'll be working with it momentarily. It's garlic time next. Okay, sounds good, Chi Delta. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for popping by. Yeah, no idea how many kitchen related items Dust has bought because of this stream. This is true. I know this. Okay, so 
these. Might be better just to like put a cutting board. Take them out of the warm pan. There's not a ton of oil in there either. But it'll start cooling off quicker, I think, if we take it out. Just a little bit of oil, really. Nice. Hi, Blood Oak, how are you? Okay, so like I said, the little green parts of the garlic kind of sprouted, so I'm gonna try and pick those off first. It smells so good, Nike, welcome. Or let's see what we're dealing with, I guess. Yeah, roast it up nice. I guess just pick off that top part if you feel like it's gonna be too dark. But this is how the clove should be and then I don't really bust it up any smaller. Sometimes we're able to like squeeze them out. I don't think that's going to be the case today. Whew. Still pretty warm, so just be careful. I was thinking like five good sized meatballs per plate today. So I start on the outside cloves and then work my way to the middle is what I typically do when picking out the roasted garlic. So there's always like two or three in the center here that are a bit smaller. But don't forget, don't forget about them. Boom, first head done. You get like eight to 10 cloves of garlic per head. Put the dark bit up there. Had a wonderful hike with your friends today. Had good food and played board games. Sounds great. Sounds lovely. Games chill zone. Thank you for the follow as well. Keep the the skin out of the garlic cloves as well. We don't need that in the meatball. Oh, it's so soft. Stop it. This one might be one that I can squeeze it out. I think we might have made it too soft though. Really does smell heavenly in here. And man, is this add a so much flavor to the meatball mix too. And a good way to make your sprouted garlic just go a little bit further. Thirty Fahrenheit today, Blood Oak. With a stiff breeze, but not a cloud in the sky. Oh, I love that. Yeah, the cold wintry days where it's just so dang sunny. What? Your contract ended? Didn't it just start? That was quick. Did you know that, Nike? Stormin over there. Stormin Norman. 
Oh, it was the temp agency one. Word. Dang, that's unfortunate. That sounded like a super good gig for you. Go, go, go. Now that these are cooling off, they're easier to pick out too. Keep going. What did we roast? Like eight heads of garlic? <laughs> Oh no, that one's trying to like roll away. It's like, I'm out of here. That one got really crispy. Crisped. Crispy roasted garlic. Interesting how that works. It's like, yeah, we're caught up now. Thanks for your help. And now you can go home. Like, what? And another one. So sticky. This. Is that piece out of the top? Boom. Boom. Hi, Space Dive. How are you doing? Yeah, no skimping on garlic today's stream. That's for sure. All of the garlics. Just keep going. Nice. Welcome in from the UK. I'm from Canada. We do have a lot of European folks, so welcome in. Glad to have you. Happy you found us. <laughs> Nike's just kicking rocks. It is known, right? No vampires in here today. They can try all they want. But we are protected. Spooky. Those spookers. Take that off. So that was like the perfect half an hour. 30 minutes, 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Eight heads of garlic, roasted. <laughs> yeah, Bonk is a vampire that loves garlic. The only one. Okay, a couple more in the center as always. There's usually like two, one on each side. Okay, only two more heads to go. We're laughing. If you have a decent amount of silver, that's a guaranteed werewolf repellent. Hi, Games Chill Zone. What are you getting up to today? How was your weekend? Squeeze. Squeeze. Last one. Okay, now only one more. 
crashed it. Is 69 cents a head a lot? That does seem like a little high. Like, I'm not even joking. I'm pretty sure I got two pounds worth of garlic for $5 at this store, Nike. Although it did sprout within like a couple of weeks. So whether it was a good quality or not, that is to be determined. Or sorry, that's Tika Sella saying that you guys just have the same color username. Yeah, 69 cents for a head. I guess it depends on where you're located, right? Oh, no. Thanks for the raid, friend. That is our friend that we work with. His name is Eric, goes by Sam Hyrule on Twitch. How was your stream? What did you make? How did things go? Thank you for the shout out as well, Bonk. Yes, if you've never caught him live yet, go give him a follow so that you can catch Sam next time. And that is also a 420 friendly stream as well. Okay, cleaning up the mix here. I will go wash my hands next. There are a couple more bits for me to pick off before I'm happy, happy with this. Hi, Stam. Okay, perfect. Now let's go wash our garlic hands. Next up, we will just put the garlic aside and we're going to shave some Parmesan petals to mix into the meatballs. Sometimes freshness of foods can be a bit questionable. Yeah, because you don't even know how long it sat on the shelf. Totally. What's up, Astra? What's happening? You got some ants in your pants? What do you think? have been de-garlicked. I'm gonna grab the cheese while I'm over here. Brand new wheel of cheese. Put that to the side. Wipe up some garlicky bits. This is what we're getting into next. 30 month aged Parmigiano Reggiano. Yo, what is with this? One of like probably my biggest pet peeve ever on stream. People are telling me to roll up my sleeves. Roll your sleeve up. Why are you micromanaging a streamer? So this chunk of Parmesan, it's just under one kilo. It's 914 grams, $22. And then usually this lasts like three months, I would say. Roll them up. <laughs> and then cool thing about this is it like shows you right where the Parmesan came from in Italy. So I really like to always read up like where the ingredients come from. Was it the same dude from before? I'm so proud of you, Tika. So yeah, I can't believe I used to buy minced in a jar. I'm never going back. Good. That's good. Okay, so 
Look at this. In here, you can see the salt crystals with how the cheese has been aged. So we're just going to, I think I'll just peel the petals off of this as we go. The rind is on this end and the bottom side you can see, and then this whole side is all usable. Roll them up. XRP. Three months, or sorry, 30, it's 30 months. Oh yeah, I said it lasted three months. That's right, Deep True. That would last like a week. I use it sparingly. How do I want to open this? Let's go this side. It's a bit extra plastic. Yeah, you're fine, Games Chill Zone. You're A-OK. -okay. You can stay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, plot twist. I can't roll the sleeves up. What about that? Okay, so Parmesan petals. This might get a bit messy, but let's have fun with it. I think my peeler is in the dishwasher. Cleaned. Yes. Yes. Ready? Just do your peeler, shave off chunks like that. And then when we mix this into the meatball, it's going to like flake up smaller, right? but still give like good cheesy bits rather than grating it fine. So I'll kind of stop there and then come back this way. And so if we're making seven orders of meatballs today and we set around five per person, bigger size, we need 35 meatballs total. So then for 35 meatballs, I would say like a cup a cup of this nice grated Parmesan bits. Go a little bit more. Go back to this other side now. They're so yummy. Whoa, just had like a super weird audio sound. Did you guys have that too? I've made these meatballs before and they always turn out so dang good. Usually in the restaurant when we make them, they have like the pre-shaved Parmesan just in the bag to pour out of. We're working for ours today. So I'll stop there because we are going to garnish with a little bit more Parmesan later, but we will grate that one so it's a bit finer. Yeah, and then for my own self, I need some of this in my life for sure. You always gotta taste the ingredients you're working with. Mmm. And like I find the longer Parmesan is aged, the more sweet and fruity it gets too. Mmm. So now, just kind of fluff this up. Wow. Yeah, I shouldn't have ate that bunk. Now I just wanna sit down make a charcuterie board and relax the rest of the day just eat cheeses and meats with a glass of wine <laughs> shouldn't have done that okay just gonna move this over and we're gonna get into making the meatball mixture now i think make some room for a big mixing bowl i think i'll use my shallow one rather than the high-sided one. Ooh, muffin war. We're making blood orange mimosas with fresh squeezed blood oranges. Mmm. That reminds me of the ones we did with the Meyer lemons when they were in season. So dang good. Okay, open this up. I'm gonna put two gloves on 
So I'm just gonna start picking the meat from what we ground, basically set up enough that we need to use. What do we think? Uh, the meatballs probably give people like, what, seven ounces worth of meat? Took out half a wedge of double cream brie too. Mm. And that's what you did last night, Bonk? Oh man. Kind of fluff this up as we drop it in. So I think this will for sure make like two, two sheet pans worth of meatballs. We'll do the three orders on the one sheet pan and then R4 on the other one. And I'm okay if there's extra too. Just we know the minimum amount that we need. One more bit from this side and that should be good. Oh yeah. Okay, so I need to make eight then. Thanks for the reminder, Eric. I think Sam is sleeping. It's super quiet over there. I forgot that you guys were getting in. Just one order though, right? Seriously, thank you for the reminder because I wouldn't have made enough, I don't think. Okay, stop there. That's like the maximum amount that I can put in the bowl anyways. Now, scoop that up. And I'm actually gonna just take these gloves off. They're too big for me anyway, so I think I can just sneak them off. I just gotta crack some eggs, get some dried oregano as well, and then salt and pepper in with this. <laughs> You're welcome, dude. You are welcome. Stammy. We have a Stam and then my husband's name is Sam. <laughs> Guys, all of it? All of it. <laughs> yep. When I laugh like that, the dog also laughs her tail wigs. It's kind of cute. She's like, yeah, all of it. This is amazing. You had Gruyere, aged cheddar, white cheddar, Parmesan, brie, strawberry habanero jelly, lemon curd, fig jam, peppered salami, artichoke and parm dip. Oh, my favorite. I can eat so much of that. <laughs> Garlic parm pretzel chips, assortment of crackers, almonds, dried cherries, wine, wine, and wine. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, eggs, salt and pepper. Like I said, dried oregano is what I like to add as well. I think that's it. Yeah, watch out girl. Be careful. Yeah, that sounds good. That's like better than anything that you will ever find from a restaurant that makes charcuterie boards. I'm just gonna kind of like sprinkle the oregano over in one layer. That'll be good. Pepper. You're watching Janelle Wheeler. She was a former singer on American Idol, what? That's cool. Well, I'm happy you found other people that you enjoy spending time with. The internet can be a pretty wonderful place, depending on where you look. All of the pep.
This is going to be fun to mix. So since we added Parmesan, we can dial back the salt just a little bit. But still, it's quite deceiving how much salt is needed to season the meat. That, and now our eggs will crack. Probably all of these. Mm, maybe three. Four. I feel weird about doing five full eggs. That didn't even cover the spicy sweet pickles, castro Milano, and Kalamata olives, sweet chipotle garlic cloves. What? Sweet chipotle garlic cloves? Yum. And all the other sweets like chocolate truffles, peanut butter fudge, mini biscotti. Oh my goodness. That sounds like literal heaven. I'm coming over. You need to start a ghost kitchen bonk. Selling charcuterie boards on Saturdays. <laughs> so I do eggs in the meatballs, but no breadcrumb. Stay in the bowl, egg. I see you there. Yeah, I'll do this fifth one. Then I'll show you how we mix this up. There is a good recipe linked with a very similar way to what I am doing right now. I'm just going to wipe this raw egg off of the cutting board so it doesn't soak in. So dang good. And then what? Before we even start mixing this, we should probably prepare a couple of sheet pans because once this is mixed, we can ball it and form it and put it on the pans ready to go later. Just keep them in the fridge like that. Whoa, you had all of those wines? Yum. Bob, if I try to mix in a bowl that full, I'd end up with it on my ears. Well, you better keep watching. We just might. Yeah, all of that would cost. Imagine trying to get all of that from a restaurant. No. Okay, just tearing a bit of parchment to line the pans. That is necessary. Between the garlic and the cheese, yeah, it can get a bit messy when we bake these. Oh, dang, you broke your finger on Thursday? I'm sorry to hear that, Gail. I was thinking that we would do it probably on a Sunday. Probably do the lasagna love on a Sunday or a Friday. And then I have my PayPal link on my Twitch channel page for the donation. So I'm not sure how much the groceries would cost, but I guess you can just contribute what you feel comfortable with. So those are ready to go behind us now. Should I do a third tray just in case? I mean, worst comes to worst, we just use it for the cookies instead after. You were at school once, you didn't pass your award, not because of cooking eggs properly. Ah, oh, it's because you got a shell in. That is the worst though. Like if you've ever had a dish, with eggshell in it. Oh, that turned me off of eggs for a bit. It's the crunch. The crunch and weird texture of the eggshell, me oh my. Something about it. Okay. Let's get into this goodness. I'll put my glovies back on. You do just a lasagna or a salad with it. I think it's just the lasagna. Yeah, I've been trying to like suss out what exactly it is. 
Not very well explained. <laughs> okay. First, I always just bung up the eggs. Break the yolks. Distribute it a bit more. The liquid and stuff. Yeah, how do you think Samo got his dad bod? Exactly. Good one, Nike. Okay, now I'm literally just gonna like pick most of this up and like fold it. Fold it underneath. Turn. Mix. So I'm being super duper gentle with the meat right now. Because as soon as you start to over mix this, you're going to end up with a tough and dry meatball. And that is not what we're about. Okay, now start distributing a bit more. And like work your fingers in a little bit. Still being very gentle with everything though. And then we're also just trying to distribute the garlic, the cheese, and the seasonings really evenly. Look at how big these gloves are just falling off my hand. Help! Are you guys getting the meat mixing sound at all? Yeah, getting the shell and like where you shouldn't have shell. I mean, I don't think we ever like to eat the egg shell of any type. It really throws you off. That's a wild ride. Okay, now I'm getting a bit more aggressive because it's looking like it's been mixed more evenly. Might need a bit more dried oregano, it looks like. It smells nice. It smells really dang good. Oh, there was some more oregano. It was hiding. Cause like oregano can be a bit strong. So we don't want to overpower, that's for sure. We're getting there. Sticky meat sounds. Almost like every meatball is going to have a bit of garlic clove in it. I think that's good, guys. You're just picking this up. It even feels good. That's like the maximum amount of mix mixage I would want on here. Hi, Weasel. This is for the meatballs, yeah. And then usually, this is also what I like to do. I think I might just take the gloves off for now. Because we should really, really, really taste this mix before we ball it all up. Otherwise, what if you ball it all up and then you bake it, follow all the way through, and you're like, it's not that good. Yeah, go get the oregano. Okay, so I'm just going to take these off. We'll do a small little ball. I'll just get the induction with the fry pan so it goes quick. So you always taste your mix before you start dispersing it. Very, very important. Hugs to you too. <laughs> Ready to battle with my meatball mix. Just make one big meatball. 
Oh, I still had my incarcerum plugged in back here. Oops. And then what do we got for time? 2.20. We're doing good. Have just over two hours left for the rest. One small frying pan. Heat that up. Put a little bit of oil down just to stop it from sticking. Oops. Yeah, watch out, girl. Yeah, run over. I'm still thinking back to the person that said roll up your sleeves. Like, they do realize that, like, chef coats are all long sleeve, right? <laughs> you do realize this. Stop it. Okay, so I'll just ball those with my hand the rest of the way. I'll just do one small one over here, just with a spoon. Holy, two garlic cloves and one meatball. Wow. And then when we're tasting this, we can like smash it down flatter into a patty. It'll cook quicker. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just gotta taste it. Can you ask if you any mishaps happen? Always. Yeah, we hope that they don't happen. What's one of the things that happened lately? Mishaps when I was cooking. Did something happen yesterday even? I can't remember. Sometimes there's like some funny things that happen though. I do things accidentally. Flip it with a fork. Okay, almost half cooked. Go, go, go. The gnocchi, good one, Mish. A hundred glove meatballs. Yeah, there was one time when we tried to make gnocchi on stream and I didn't follow the recipe. And then I ended up with potato water. That was kind of sad. So yeah, look at the way that these brown up because of the garlic in there. It is so good. And the cheese too helps form a nice crust. Whoa, why are you being like that? I bet you we got like one splash on the camera. One splash on the lens to rule them all. A hundred clove meatballs, almost. Yeah, we almost probably did end up with like a hundred cloves. Oh, a meatloaf that Sam hated. Yeah, no one make the Ina Garten turkey meatloaf. I halved the amount of onions in it and it was still overpowering. Absolutely trash. Okay. I'm gonna put this over here. Cool off a moment. And get rid of all this too. See how our mixture is tasting. Hi, Neam Regan, how have you been? Astra, over here, please. Thank you. Okay. I just put this to rest on the little roasted garlic thing that we had.
It's like medium in the middle, but so good. Garlic flavor is good. Definitely needs some more salt. And a bit more oregano. Almost like exactly what I thought we needed. Mmm. The texture of the grind is so good. So good. Just got back from the grocery store. You had to buy a food processor because your boyfriend and you want chicken nuggies. Yo, you're making your own chicken nuggies? That honestly, like, deserves a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you for your services to the world. <laughs> I love to hear that. I hope it goes well. Okay, this should do it. For the salt, one more sprinkle of oregano and then that is good. Mish is pretty raw in the middle. I says pardon. That's why we never over mix the meatball mixture first either, right? Then it gets gluey and tough. And then all the juices cook out later. So now we can keep carrying on here. Just trying to put my glove on safely. That's so good. Yeah, we try and take all our precious favorite foods and just like make it ourselves. I love that. Okay, so now we gotta mix this in like that. Fold it over to disperse. Astra's mad because I never shared the meatball with her, the taster. Sorry. It's not for doggos. Sorry. Did you hear her mooing? She's giving me dramatic moos. I'm just gonna plop that on top even. And now I think we're good. We can start balling. Or wait. Nah, we can get the sauce simmering after this. Oh, previous. Take all of our previous favorite foods. Like from when you were a kid then. Okay. So. Sheet pan. Get that over here safely. I'm just, I'm a meat lady right now. And now we're just gonna make nice sized meatballs. Basically just bring them together. And then pop it on the pan. No over mixing here ever. I think I might just take the gloves off guys. I'm just gonna go wash my hands. I can't do this. It's going to make me go so slow. We were supposed to get smaller ones, but that didn't happen this week. I'll be right back momentarily. Now we're gonna go, go, go. Even though I don't love the texture of the meat like this. It's fine. Yeah, 
Yeah. No meatballs for doggo. Too much garlic for sure. Just literally put that in the middle. I gotta be one with the meat, Lukey Bears. Yep, we've committed, right? So I should be able to do maybe four by six. I like this meatball contraption that we're talking about though. Can get into that. Okay, that one's really big. Does that mean we have to add to this? Hello, Catchy. How are you? Are we doing homemade pasta? No, because I don't have an extruder to make the spaghetti. So we're just going to boil the spaghetti. We're going to do everything else, though, made from scratch the best we can. Whoa, your old dog once ate two whole garlic heads. You had to go to the vet. See? That's serious stuff. Poor doggles. Yeah, you're welcome. So next up after this, we're going to get the tomato sauce simmering. For the meatballs and the spaghetti. And then I think we'll start balling up the cookie dough to bake. And then while that stuff is working, we can just work on the salad, the side salad. So we do all the hard stuff first, finish with the easy things. That's how I like my day to go. Oh my gosh. That doesn't, I don't know, that kind of doesn't sound right. <laughs> Neum. It's like your aunt is giving her dog chocolate. Huh? Lukey Bears, so we did fresh ground this morning. I did one whole pork shoulder with some beef tenderloin scraps from yesterday's Wellington prep when I was butchering the whole beef tenderloin. So like two thirds pork, one third beef ratio on these, uh, eight heads of garlic roasted and like a cup of Parmesan cheese, five eggs, and then dried oregano, salt and pepper. Yeah, Wellington beef, that turned out so good yesterday. Gotta make the first couple of meatballs a bit bigger, I think. Yeah, has Ramsey contacted us yet? Not yet. Not yet, I was hoping he might. We were really proud of the Wellington yesterday. Yeah, go back to like the end of stream where we cut it open if you wanna see how it turned out. I was very proud. Okay, now those are all accurate size. So then this size of meatball will bake in like 15 minutes in the oven. Higher heat, 400, 425, something like that. So it gets a little bit like rendered on the outside. Subliminal messages in stream FCB. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna get, what is this? Five by four, so 20 meatballs on a tray. That's good. Yeah, you've watched Hell's Kitchen, that's a good show. Clem, we're balling the meats. We're ballers, shot callers. The best thing you can do to make meatballs is just not overwork them. So I'm like just rolling these until they stay together. That's it. 
but like you can clearly see the separation of the fat and protein still. That's what you want. It's when you start to emulsify the fats with the proteins that it gets overworked. Yeah. Bala, shot collar, 20 inch blades on the Impala. <laughs> okay. I got really crazy meat hands right now, so I'm gonna try and do this the cleanest that I can. Go up there. Next tray. I think we're gonna have extra meatballs. You know what this is also a good mix for though? We may or may not have taken this entire mix before and put it into a patty and made like a meatball sandwich. Cook it like a burger. Yeah, that's a good option too. Or stuff some casings, yep. And do sausages, good one bonk. But yeah, just for like a quick way to use this up if you're not feeling like a meatball. Or yeah, a Salisbury like steak style for sure. These ones are getting bigger. <laughs> what is everyone else getting up to today? Are you cooking? Are you gonna order some foods? What's on the agenda slash menu? That one is full of garlic. It's all you can see in the meatball. 4 p.m. just got out of bed, weasel. Whew, had a good sleep in then. Got a fresh New York strip from the butcher, Lukey Bear. Gonna do that with some asparagus and pasta. Yummo. Clem's getting some Korean fried chicken for din. What do you typically order for the Korean fried chicken? Do you go with the really spicy one? The gochujang sauce or glaze? It's so dang spicy, the one that they make here. Oh no. Woke up drunk still, so nothing got done. <laughs> I've been there, but it's been many, many years, many years. Bonk, no idea what we're doing today. Oh, nice, Stam. Toblerone tray bake turned out much better than you thought. It's more like a cookie bar. Yeah, that's what I had in like my head when I was trying to imagine what it would be. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, you love the spice. Green Fang's having Boston pizza. Are you having pizza from there or something else? BPs. Couldn't taste the rum and it was too late. <laughs> Where's all the rum gone? What movie is that from? Someone will know. I'm gonna try a new recipe on some thick boneless pork chops. Good one. Those are always yummy. Yeah, that sounds like a good night of drinking. Holy. Yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean. Ding, ding, ding. One gold star for you, Sam Hyrule. Spicy rogi pizza. That's like the go-to for everyone, I think. Okay, good thing we prepped the three trays because we'll definitely need that.
Yeah, after we roll all these, we'll just put them in the fridge to chill. Let them firm on, firm on up a little bit as well. And then it's tomato sauce and cookie dough time. We're doing good for timing still. The ones on this tray we made way bigger. They will be for us. We started watching South Park. Like from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, Samo doesn't usually like get anything like that, Nike, when he eats. But yeah, garlic burps are going to be a thing for sure. Your high school had butter tart squares. Yum. Chris, how are you doing? South Park is a good idea. Yeah, we're uh, literally on the fourth episode. I fell asleep last night. My bad. Not that it was boring. I was just like so cozy. I was good. One more tray. We're in meatball land. Yeah, no, they didn't age that well. But the humor is still there. And like, okay, so the one that we downloaded has them like talking about the episode previously. Like, are all South Parks like that? I've never watched it before, so I don't know. I love their like explanation of the episode previous to watching it. Freaking hilarious. What a bunch of weird dudes. That's all I can say. What a couple of weird dudes. This one needs to be bigger. Yeah, so they actually like animated it, not with a computer generated one. That's what makes the difference, right? <laughs> like some of the stuff they say, oh my goodness. We're balling, balling, balling. Those two got kicked out of film school. I could see that for the time. Yeah, that stuff would never fly back then. Hi, Tom, Tom, Tom. How have you been? Yeah, happy Saturday. Nandar Souza, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Oh, dang, these are going to be good. Now that I already tasted one to make sure it was good, I am excited.
pan back. It smells so garlicky in here too. Okay, just gonna put a couple of things away before we get to the next step, which is our tomato sauce. So meatballs will go away. We'll put a lid on this ground meat. So this is for you, Nike. And Travis D78, thank you for the follow. So that'll be for the meatloaf another day. Do that together. How come you're not fitting now? grab while I'm here. Onion. Some onion for the sauce. The tomato sauce. Okay, I think I gotta go over on my own, bring all the meatballs over to the fridge. You have a recipe for meatloaf from your grandma. She said originally came out a Canadian Living magazine. How long has that magazine been published for? Yum, Rocky Road Squares, that sounds good too. Then where are we at? Okay, from the meatballs, we're like halfway through the list now, which means things are gonna keep getting easier for us. Okay, I will be back momentarily. Should I wake up the bear? I think he's been sleeping for like three hours already. I just need like one more hand, that's all. I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna pause or mute this. I'll be right back. Okay, I was able to find some room here, so I didn't even have to go. We are gonna get rid of this dishes, and then we got our onion and start making some tomato sauce. Yeah, you don't hear the screams. Ah! I didn't wake him up. I'll wait like 10 more minutes. Wash off my garlic knife. And then we're just going to blitz this sauce up. Like we'll leave the onions kind of chunky. I don't think I'm gonna put garlic into this sauce at all since the meatballs are like covered in garlic. Just a nice tomato sauce that goes good with the spaghetti and the meatballs. And then we have fresh basil for garnish. And at least this will have time to simmer for like a nice hour or so. So it's all about cooking the tomatoes for long enough so that they go more sweet than like bitter and acidic. Let it sleep. Just let the bear sleep, Kate, okay? Okay, so just chop this up real quick. We'll open up our big can. We'll use this whole half onion. Whole half. It's a white onion, so this has actually a nice sweetness on it as well, compared to yellow onion. Boom. Can go and compost the peels. 
chunk it up. Wow, 1975 Canadian Living Magazine has been around. That's insane. Okay, so I'm just gonna do one inch slices through this way. And we'll go back through the onion this way. And those are the chunks that we're gonna saute before we put the tomato in. That's how we create just a little bit more flavor for our sauce. The sweetness of the onion. I'll put that over here and then we'll get the induction set up again. And then how or what do I want to cook the sauce in? That's a good question. I think I'll just do it in this big Dutch oven. Yeah. Onions are good to sneak into stuff for sure. That's a big can of tomato, although we don't have to use it all. Let's get that started. Up to 330 Fahrenheit. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. So the frying pan that we use just to taste the meatball has lots of oil in it. For sure, pour that out for the sauce. This whole chat is full of meatballs. I should have made a little meatball emote for us today. That and that's good. And then we'll just do a little bit more oil. And I'm gonna do olive oil. I like that with tomato sauce. The Dutchie? Who's the Dutchie? Get a spoon as well. Spoon, can opener. You also have to open up this vac bag of sauce. This is the sauce that I think we did with the pizza last. It will still be very good though. And we need a little shim. Oh, the Dutch oven. I was like, who's the Dutchie? I didn't see anyone enter. There we go. Okay, I can smell it. Let's just test. Perfect. As long as it sizzles when you add the onion, we're good. Guys, I'm proficient at giving Dutch ovens, Nike says. Stir it up. Let this get golden brown. That's how we get more flavor into the tomato sauce. So while we wait, open up the can of tomato, the bag that we're gonna add in. We'll be set up. Set up for success. What green thing? That's kind of funny. That's good to go. Yeah, that, I always forget that this dog is like obsessed with tomatoes. Just like a small, small can of San Marzano's. Very small. <laughs> the head comparison. Nice, we're getting some browning action. Let's go. Opening the can. Oh, 
When will Feta be here? In a bit, Mish. The feta will be coming in near the end because it's with the salad. So I usually save the easy stuff for the last bit of cooking. But soon, like we got to get the cookies in the oven before we get into our salad. So yeah, we're starting this to simmer on the side. We'll roll our cookies and then after that, we'll focus on the salad. Whoa, we're popping. Watch your face. In the end, it doesn't even matter. Scrape all that off. You need to taste this. That's canned tomato. Yeah, it's not that good. She asked me to taste it. Wash the hands. Not that good until it's cooked. Silly doggo. Turn this up one higher even. And then why don't we add a little bit of salt now? Just to season the onions through. <laughs> Green Fang went all scientific on us. I like it. I'm into it. Just a sprinkle. We'll also draw out more moisture as well. Don Kedick? Kedick? Thank you for that follow. Stir, stir, stir. Maybe do a little bit of red wine to deglaze if we have to. Red wine and tomato sauce is good if you have some around. For sure. And wow, we don't even have like the steam building up on the camera really. This is wild. Yeah, big brain energy flex. Yeah, with salt. The lack of sriracha in like our kitchen? Or yours? Look at the clip of a dog owner cutting up pickles. The dog wouldn't quit begging, so you got a slice of it, quickly spit it out, gave the owner a gnarl, and walked away. <laughs> it's like, thanks a lot. Almost there. Grab the wine. What else? This egg carton is done, so that can go in the recycle. I will do a little bit of the oregano in the sauce as well, just so the flavors combine with the meatballs and the tomato nicely. Yeah, I don't think I'll have sriracha in the kitchen. So we have like some fancy hot sauces. We have some that Eric sent us, some that Rook sent us. And then we also just make our own. So yeah, sriracha has been like, I don't know, kicked out. Kicked out of the kitchen. Okay, we're getting close to where we want to be. As long as there's like some nice color in there, that's what we're looking for. That, I don't think we'll need any like water. We're gonna cross off tomato sauce. So we're gonna ball the cookies next and bake them. The dough has been chilling outside since the beginning of stream. And 
just turn my ringer on in case anyone needs me today. Yeah, that's so cool. Stepsister and her fam in Vancouver make their own hot sauces from peppers they grow. That's what Eric did too. And sent us a bunch. Okay, we are almost here. Getting nice golden brown. So I'll do the red wine first, just enough to cover the bottom of the pot. And then start adding the tomatoes, stirring everything together. I guess we could also do the bit of oregano sprinkled over. You could also do basil, but I think we'll blend some fresh basil in later. Like you wanna keep the fresh herbs to the end because they will go brown the longer that they cook in there. So if you blend it when the sauce is like basically already together, it stays very fresh tasting. Saute the oregano just a little bit. And then this is, and not very expensive wine, but I like to cook with it. Just the Apothic Red, which is a blend. Yeah, don't touch your eyes after picking the peppers. Good one. Om nom nom. Now we got steamed up. And then that will reduce the rest of the way out as it simmers along. So I'm just gonna add this on the side. <laughs> Boop. Squeeze all of this goodness out. Try not to make a mess. Yeah, girl. You always buy your sauce in a jar. It's so easy to make at home. You just need like an hour, an hour worth of time, or you could probably do it like overnight on the low setting in the slow cooker. I'm not sure, I've never done that. So this is pre-done sauce that we made on another stream. I always just take it out of the freezer and combine it. Look at how dark that is. This is gonna be good. And now we will carefully add in the rest of this can. Oh my gosh. Like pour it down the side of the pot. Now we're making an even bigger batch. Scrape, scrape, scrape. And then for sure, I would recommend putting a lid on this as it comes back up to a simmer because it will start to splash. It's wild. Mix this up. And I'm just gonna put that to the side for now, guys. Like I said, simmer it for about an hour or so until the tomatoes start to taste more sweet than acidic then you know you're good. Then we'll just put this in the Vitamix later to finish it, or we can use the immersion blender. I will say the Vitamix makes a much nicer smooth sauce, but if you like chunky tomato sauce, use your little stick hand blender. Yeah, that's a good idea too, Mish. Like ask your Italian restaurant, maybe they'll sell you some of their sauce they make. Hopefully they make it in house, right? <laughs> They're like, no, we won't sell you this. We make it from the jar too. <laughs> okay, done with that. It's cookie balling time. First we do the meatballs, now we do cookies. Like I said, just put a lid on there as this comes up and then we'll stir it momentarily too. If I know tomato sauce, it likes to try and stick on the bottom.
Perfect. Keep your spoon near that as well. All right, I'm just gonna wipe the board off quickly after doing all that stuff. Rachel, Ray, and Guy Fieri use the San Marzano tomatoes a lot. They are so nice, I will say. Like, much higher quality than some other Canadian brands. How does Sam sleep through the smells in talking? He's a special breed, Bob. That guy is a special breed. Rachel has a history. I have never read it up. Never read up the history. Okay, so before we start, probably another couple sheet pans prepped, but this time we got the easy way out. We use the silicone mats for cookie baking. Not upside down. And then, yeah, I'll probably just do these two trays and finish up afterwards. Fam just uses Roma tomatoes. Those are good too. Yeah, there's a lot of brands out there that are good, but there are some others that are great. The dough has been chilled. White chocolate macadamia cookie dough. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. Okay, now I should be able to put in a pair of gloves on and I use a scoop for these. She says one to one and a half tablespoon balls. And that's what this little scoop is. So it's very handy. And then I do like to put the gloves on just to help it from sticking to my hands. The dope. And then oven is still probably pretty warm. I'm not gonna turn it on just yet. Maybe after the first tray. How's this? We got some simmerage happening in there. It's wonderful. So we just scoop, basically pack it into this little thing. Scoop it out, just work it a little bit to make a little dough ball and that's it. So they're not massive. So I'll probably give five of these. Instead of three. So I like how these bake really evenly. Honestly, I think I might just switch to using my hands almost. So awesome, Tikasella. So, so awesome. So yeah, just fluff this up. I think we'll go just a bit larger. Yeah, don't buy pre-made stuff. Cook from scratch, like when you can, right? Everyone has stuff going on in their life, so just do the best that you can. Okay, I'm just gonna turn this down one and I think I'm gonna give it a stir. Yeah, see? It's trying to already stick on the bottom. Told y'all. Keep it moving. When you can hear the tomato burbles from under the lid, it's like, excuse me, what is going on there? What is this? Oh, 
These are the funniest. Getting the Uber Eats notifications while I'm streaming, making amazing food. $20 off. Now, isn't that convenient? <laughs> Then I also made a recipe of these cookies, but gluten-free style for Anisopteryx for part of his cookie box that he got. And those turned out really good too. Just like substitute gluten-free flour. Tasted really good still. Ooh, throw in the cookie doughs. Just trying to loosen this off the bottom of the mixer. There we go. I'm also really excited for tomorrow's menu. Shrimp and grits. We've never done that before on stream. That should go pretty quick and easy. Hi, Parabex. Just wanted to let you know that even though the Lloyd Pan stove top pans, they aren't induction. Okay, that is good to know. Thank you. They're not induction, but they are just as amazing as the Detroit pans. And the wife's obsessed. Good. I'm so happy that like cheese pizza was the first person that showed us the Lloyd pans. And yeah, since then we've been showing our community as well. Glad to hear all of the reviews from everyone. Dialing in my tomato sauce temp on the side while we do this too. Smelling really good already. Okay, so once these go in the oven, it's a 12 minute bake Yay. at I think just 350 Fahrenheit. We'll recheck the recipe quickly before we start the oven, but that's like a very typical cookie baking temperature. Hi, Vicky in paradise. Oh, yum. She says, love shrimp and grits, but never made it either. Yeah, so I had to go to a specialty African market that Stam Hyrule told me about is by his house. And I picked up the white corn grits there. A big bag of them was like $7. So that's going to go far. Because, yeah, grits in Canada are not really a thing. If you ask a store about grits, they'll, like, just give you cornmeal. It's not the same. Cheese grits with scallions, Caribbean jerk grilled shrimp. Oh, dude. Yum. Yeah, we're definitely going to cheese up the grits tomorrow. Cheese, cheese, cheese it up. I think I'll do, like, a mix of cheddar and Emmental. Get this last bit of dough loosened up for myself. We're almost there. Last time I had shrimp and grits was in Portland at a famous restaurant called, I think it's the Screen Door. Oh, freaking sirens flying by. Oh no, what? I 
after this tray, I'm gonna stir the tomato sauce again. It's, it's calling my name. I feel it. It's like, hey, I need help. I think, wow, the sun actually came out today. I've seen the sun in a couple days. This is nice. Okay, so we need one more sheet pan prepped just with some parchment will do. Let me just stir this. We make a marinara. Funny, because I'm going to be... Or actually, I don't have to do this on Monday. Chris will be making some more. Okay, let's get this scoop out. Thought we needed it. It wasn't fully necessary. Yeah, so in Canada, like in the regular grocery store, no grits. Just either coarse ground cornmeal, like Bob's Red Mill, or the fine ground stuff. You have to go to like a international market if you want the actual grits. And I was so happy that I found him. Oh, that was almost like a perfect tear. Man, this cookie dough is just loaded with the back macadamia nut and the chocolate. No skimping on the fillings. You've never eaten grits, Blue Fire? Have you ever had like a cornmeal before though, or like a polenta? It's like kind of same, same, just a different texture a bit. Astra, did you get uncle? I think she's getting Sam. <laughs> she's like, hey, it's time to wake up, uncle. I hear her sneezing. You're not sure? Well, yeah, you would probably know. But if you like corn, I would suggest trying them. If you like creamy things, like it's also more of like a porridgey sort of texture. So if you're okay with porridge, porridge like textures, then you will enjoy it. I really find that like polenta and grits and everything like that is just better with dairy too. So the more dairy you put in almost the better. So yeah, hopefully you're not vegan or anything. Right, yeah, so this is one thing I've done before bonk in a restaurant is I did a sweet form of grits for a dessert when I was a pastry chef. We had sort of like a Southern style or even like a South American style menu at the time for our features. And I cooked the grits in coconut milk and did like a tropical sort of grit dish with like preserved pineapple, coconut flakes. It was so yummy, like very different. Kind of like a savory cream of wheat. Yes. Yeah. Vicky, you love cheese grits, right? They got to be done just perfectly, though. Yeah. Cheesy and then salty sweet. I think you would like it, Green Fang. Okay, just going to make this one a bit smaller. So we can get one more full cookie ball here and then it's time to turn on the oven yeah get him get uncle get uncle get him Eat uncle, eat him.
Oh no, Misha's rolling up the sleeves. Oh no. I even rolled mine up a couple times. That's peer pressure. <laughs> okay, 350 on the oven. Get that baby heating up. Quickly check this. Yeah, 350 Fahrenheit. 12 to 13 minutes until lightly browned on the sides and the centers are gonna look soft, she said. Okay, I'm in. Next one, working into the big Italian salad. Do we want to quickly do the dressing maybe first? And then I'm only going to do two trays of cookies at a time in the oven for us. Just so they bake as even as possible. Don't want any messed up ones. That's all good. <laughs> Mish, are you in the wine? Stir up the sauce one more time. I think I gotta go grab one more bag of lettuce. But maybe the bear can do that for us and we'll start washing the other bag first. And then from there we can chop up all the veggies. Misha's beating Dust's butt behind the scenes. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> A big Italian salad. We got the recipe linked. Check it out if you've never had one. Beat that dust. It just goes more and more everywhere. So this. Thank you for the 128 bits, Blue Fire. I appreciate you. These tomatoes, we have some kumatos. Those are yummy. Those are yummy ones. And we'll wash these up before we cut them. Throwing a tomato. Yeah, we don't have big milk in Alberta. That's like an Eastern Canada thing. Ooh, those are so nice and ripe actually for like the first time ever. So pick the most ripe ones out. Whoa, that one's super soft. And actually some of these are still hard, so I'm gonna do that. A little switch up, if you will. There we go. One whole cucumber. And then we also, I like to do sweet bell peppers. These are tomatoes. I don't think there's anything really fancy about them, Bob. They're just a different variety. There's so many different tomato varieties out there. Okay, we'll do yellow and then orange just to play around with the different colors. So that's okay. Thanks, dear Lee. How was your nap? How was the napa? And then I'm grabbing a strainer. Astra did good waking you up. I didn't even tell her. She's like, um, it's time to get up now, sir. <laughs> she was biting it. She was eating uncle. No, good, she like, good girl. She went down like, like her stretch. Oh, but she put her head underneath my armpit. Oh! 
Yeah, they look like plums almost, not tomatoes, hey? Who, who is the bearded man? Who this? Dark tomatoes. Okay, going to wash all this stuff up because even these are a bit dirty. So we'll do that first and let it dry off. And then these are the baked greens that we picked up. So we have two of these to wash. A Tuscan lettuce, if you will, right on brand with today's theme. Tuscan lettuce. <laughs> Wash, wash, wash. Let those drip dry. has feet in it? What? You ate a cookie ball? Excuse? Yo, this is from Fresh Point in Vancouver. <laughs> I was like, I know them. A Kumado. A trade name given to a patented patented cultivar of tomato developed in Spain called Olmeca. Whoa. So really, we call it X SX387 tomato. It is firm, with a color ranging from a green to reddish brown or purple, varying in flavor from almost no flavor, ew, probably when it's very green still, to sweeter than typical tomatoes due to a higher fructose content. There we go. Patented. Patented. <laughs> Send help. Okay, so as we like fluff through this, definitely look for the leaves that are sag. No sag leaves allowed. This is not what we serve to people. Just pick them out. That's what the compost is for. They already did most of the hard work for us. So let's just do our due diligence here. I absolutely cannot stand serving people bad greens. Like salads are so expensive to begin with. If you're gonna put things that are rotten in there, nah. And snuck down the side. Slapping Nike. <laughs> Snitches get fishes. Some people, yeah, really, uh, really enjoy serving rotten greens, Chris. We do not. Yeah, Moisty. Moisty's like, guys, I like smoking greens. We allow this. Okay, going to go do a wash up on this. That's about the maximum fillage on the salad spinner that I can go. And then I guess we'll just flip it out into this big bowl afterwards. Yeah, we appreciate the consumption of different greens here. Okay. BRB. It really doesn't look too dirty, but it's all good. Okay, you actually scared me a sec. Didn't expect anyone in here. I thought you were in the room. I was like, who's in the bathroom? And then let's take a peek at the oven temp in a sec here. Cookies can probably start baking. Let's go. 
That is that. Do this. Grab the lid. Oven's almost there, I think. And now we're gonna spin all the extra water out so that the dressing can actually stick. What is going on? Sometimes I don't even know blue fire. <laughs> yeah, I forget what it is. It must be good, Chris says. <laughs> Look at how much water comes out of that. So usually I go empty that. This is what I'm gonna do. Just empty it into my bin here. And then do one more spin. Whoa, are you okay? What was that? Are you wild? Go, go get some water. Your water's right there. You need a drink? just had like a cough. Maybe she got into something she shouldn't have. Flip it. Washed greens, ready to go. And even then you still might find pieces to pick out. Crazy. Back over here. I'm also just gonna stir the tomato sauce again quickly. It's really bubbling. All in my name. Ouch, the lid's getting hot. Cook those tomato tomatoes. Okay, keep picking. Oh, hi Mike, you're back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Speed, how are you doing? Thank you very much for the 26 months in a row, friend. Appreciate that over the years, literally. We're just moseying right along on this stream today. Kind of in the point where we're like wrapping things up, getting ready to like start the actual cooking and plating soon. Things are going great. You're doing marvelous? Yeah, I'm doing good too, man. I got some nice wintry weather again here. Super cozy. This week just like flew by, I find too. Wild. Oh, nice, Mike. Getting ready for some people to come and get some furniture. You downsizing? That's always such a good feeling. There's no such thing as nice wintry weather. I don't know. I guess maybe it's a Canadian thing. Like, I appreciate when it's not super insanely cold. And then the snow is like so nice out right now. It's like glitter snow, the way it looks in the sun. It's kind of magical. Okay, so we only picked out that little handful. That's not bad. Into the compost. Oven, are you almost ready? Let's go rinse this quickly. I'll be back momentarily again. Giving stuff away. Yeah, I'm not going to put it in the RV. We did that before we moved and we'll probably do it one more time before we go in the truck. I think there's a Samo in here still. Oh, he's finishing up. <laughs> just, just wait, don't have to go anywhere. Okay, we have some bathroom things going on here. So we will wait momentarily. It's all good guys. And yeah, now this sauce has really come up, so I'm just gonna turn it down. Holy, she's simmering. Gotta get back to work speed. Okay, have a good day at work. Don't work too hard. 
And maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Shrimp and grits on the menu. Nike? I don't know. I let him answer that one. Minuteman, you have been away for too long. How are you? Welcome back. The shrimp sounds good, Speed, but the grits we can keep. Here, now I can show off my grits while we have a moment. This is them. This is what I found. I like that. A passion for good food. Nandy, corn flaking grits number 700. Like that's the flake, the size of the mill they do. And then if you do nandyfoods.com, it says visit our website for tasty recipes. Cool. Yeah, true grits, I was so pumped. I just like walked in the store and just asked the lady at the cashier, I was like, do you have corn grits? And where are they? Cause like, I don't know really all of the ingredients in this store and some stuff wasn't English either. Okay, are we done bathroom stuff? Oh, okay. I thought we were still sussing things out here. Yeah. Grits, butter, cheese, shrimp, throw some sauteed spinach. We are even going to sneak a bit of bacon in, I think. I do have spinach. Ooh, maybe we'll do like a spinach bacon saute to put on the grits before the shrimp. And then we are doing garlic marinated shrimps. Yeah, because every recipe that I was reading for the grits said that they need like something smoky sort of meat, whether it's bacon or andouille sausage. So I was like, okay, we still have some of our bacon. We'll do that. Feta, Mish says some feta. That actually would be good. Reja grits are awesome, but then again, I am from the south. Yeah, the only time I've ever had them like cooked for me was the Screen Door restaurant in Portland, and that was so yummy. We like had to show up at the restaurant like at least half an hour before it opened just to get in. And even then we were like lined up behind people waiting to get in still. It's like, that's when you know that the place is good. When everyone's just waiting outside before it's opened. Oh yeah, and then the other part of their menu was barbecue and that was just really bad. Not well executed. It was kind of disappointing. We always like to try a bit of everything. Aw, Mish. Thank you. Happy 20 months, friend. What? You're almost at two years with us? Where does the time go? Thank you, thank you, Mish. For all of the feta complaints. And all of the good recipes that you're sharing from Denmark too. What was the last one you translated? Some cookies, right? Okay, that's good. Pour the wash stuff into the bowl. I don't know, I think we might only need one bag. It's like, that's a lot of greens already. And oven is hot and ready. So let us bake some cookies now. Let's start with the first two trays. Hey Siri, six minute timer. Six minutes, six minutes, starting now. 
Minuteman, thank you. Thank you, thank you for five gifted subs. Let's welcome in to the kitchen crew, Bumble Bunnies, who's actually been with us for six, six months in a row. <laughs> Bob. The alerts are really loud. I don't know, no one else has really said nothing. Uh, so Faceplant Kagers, Balmung67, Cyberhawk, and Simo Swanee. I think I've actually seen all of those people in the stream before. How cool is that? Okay, this should be our last wash up. You can only get great barbecue where you're at Nike. Good, I love to hear that. I'm not even jealous. Like that should be the case. If you're gonna serve barbecue, it better be great. Not even just good, especially if it's in the States. <laughs> I don't know where the resub went, Bob but someone took care of it for you. And that someone is Minuteman. Yeah, one day. You just appreciate knowledge. Well, thank you so much. I'm happy to provide that, but I will also say, like, there's a lot of times where I learn stuff from my community as well. Just one big happy family. Almost here. I guess salad's coming up this week, because we have an entire whole bag of this left. Greek salad, it's happening. Okay. That bag of greens was actually very nice. Very nicely cleaned. Really didn't get rid of much from it. Yeah, poor Greek. Okay, BRB. One more time. The greens are done. Now we can work into cutting the veggies. And then we'll dial the tomato sauce next. And after that, we'll get the water starting to come up to a boil for the pasta. That's where we're at. Thank you, Sam, gifting a sub to Rum Zombie. <laughs> Not Rub, Rob Zombie, it's Rum Zombie. Four months in a row already, what? Welcome, friend. The Greek adds the flavor, yeah, it does. Memphis is pretty good, Tika Sella. Has anyone ever been to the Memphis in May barbecue fest? Sounds like humidity. <laughs> Sounds like it would be very humid and hot. That's funny. One more. St. Simon's Island in Georgia has an awesome barbecue spot. The American Royal? Is that another like barbecue fest or something? All of the washed greens complete. Just put that over to the side for now. 
There we go. We'll plate up with those in a bit here. We can do our cucumber next. 46 seconds until we turn the cookies as well. So I'm just gonna stir my tomato sauce again. Make sure it's happy simmering along, which it is. one more hot cloth. Five, four, three, two, one. Cucumber is also not feta. That's a fact. Oh my gosh. Two timers going off. Whoa. It almost looks done already. What the heck? Looking good. So I'm only gonna do five more minutes. On those. The American Royal Barbecue Competition is the one of the biggest barbecue competitions in America. Cool. I've never even heard of it. Get through this. We'll go in half. Get the plastic off. This is a very pristine looking cucumber. Just trim the ends. Ah, so like, all of our English cucumbers are wrapped like this, Bob. Like it's not even available in the store unwrapped. So I don't know. Apparently people come from all over to set up for it. You have some awful humidity there. Always rains most of May. Memphis in mud, but it's set up on the Mississippi River. That is so dang cool. Thanks for sharing. Maybe one day we'll get into that. Hee <laughs> hee, thanks friends. That is hype train number two. Thank you for the emotes. Thank you for all the contributors. We got seven subbies from that one to welcome into the crew. So now we're just gonna chunk up our cucumber for the salad. Nice bite-sized pieces. I like kind of playing with the vegetable shapes and sizes in the salad. Those are good. That. Whoa, yeah, so the last couple of years it wasn't a thing, but now it's back this year, Nike. That'd be cool if we knew someone that went. Veggies. And then I'm just gonna set up a couple trivets over here for the cookies once they've been baked. They can cool. Actually looks like they're done. Just peeking at them now. I think I'm gonna take them out, guys. Check this out. Yes. White chocolate macadamias. Hi, Wilson. She's 
She said the centers are very soft. So I guess once they cool, they will harden up a bit. That's crazy soft. But they are supposed to be chewy. So last sheet pan has eight on it. It's gonna be like that. There we go. Yamo! Hit 68 outside in Chicago today. Hi, Splinter Cat! How have you been? Grabbing the tomatoes and the peppers for the salad next. Fly through those. Let's do peppers first. Boom. 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 Bam. Probably trim like that. Get the seeds out. Take that little spongy core out. Next one. You're doing good there, Splinter? Good. That's good to hear. And yeah, all is well here. In the wintry province of Alberta. Yeah, Cyberhawk, welcome in. Welcome to the kitchen crew. Had lots of gifted subs today. Feel free to ask away any questions that you may have about what goes on here. Or just sit back, relax, and learn a bit. I guess I should reset the timer for the cookies, right? <laughs> Just toss them in. They'll cook themselves. They got this. Okay, we're going to do... How do I actually want to do this? I think we'll do like little... Little lengths of these peppers. So kind of put it on the bias and then... We'll do slices like that. So you want to make sure that the shapes that you're cutting for the salad are easy to eat with everything, right? Not hard to stuff in your face. That's like the maximum length I would go. It's like two inches for a vegetable. This is the fun knife skill portion of stream. Oh, we haven't done a ton of knife work today, hey? We still have to make a quick dressing for this. Just for now. Okay, that's doable. We're almost done with the salad stuff. Get this big strainer out, but we'll save this for the spaghetti later, I think. The spaghetti. And now, like, I find the cores in these small tomatoes 
too small to even have to cut out. Usually I just go in half and then wedge them up. I don't know, what do you guys feel? Like I find once they're wedged, you don't really notice the core. Those are nice. These are called a kumato. So it's like a special breed of tomato that when it's ripe like this is really nice and sweet. That's why it's like a little bit brown slash purple red colored. I got these from Costco. A kumato. You might have them there as well. They become more popular like just in the last year or so, I would say. Ranch dresses. We'll do like an herb vinaigrette, I would say. Herb and lemon vinaigrette for this. Probably just chop up the herbs and just shake everything together in a small container. Boom, we still need the sheep feta for the salad. Heirloom tomatoes. So there's a lot of different varieties of heirloom tomatoes out there and they're usually really ugly looking. That's how you know it's an heirloom. Like really weird shape, stuff like that. Whoa, this is like browning so quick. This tray looks like it's almost done too. Those look amazing. Holy. The jet engine. Okay, I'm gonna go three minutes on those and then that will be done. Let us grab some containers out. Are you able to help me plate up a little bit yep. for the salads and yep. stuff? Should we do round container for the salads or just the square ones? Switch it up a bit. Fart nuggets from yesterday. Bob, you like that one? One. Ah, she's losing her lids. Two, three. I think it's just four that we have to make because the other one is for Eric. And now four lids. One, two, three, four. And then dressing's always on this side. Do you want me to co-mingle this stuff over a bit more? Sure. And I got all the washed greens over here. So colorful, right? You know what they say about eating the rainbow. That's that. That's poor to you. One minute on the cookies. I think that's doable. I'll just go grab the sheep's feta. I'll be right back, guys. Leave you a Samo.
back with a small amount of feta. <laughs> No olives in it. Cookies are done. Look it. That's the last tree. Om nom nom. So I'll pop it up there to finish cooling. Thank you dearly. That looks awesome. And then the rest of that's just for us. And Brad and Louise. Where's the ring for? Well, Eric reminded me that he was coming to grab oh, one. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. While you were sleeping. Okay. Yeah, I was like, thanks for the reminder, bro, because I actually didn't know. <laughs> do you want me to do one more for Louise then, or a bit smaller? Yeah, I can drop it off there. So. So he's basically at his house. Hey, I don't know what was set up. Me, I know. Eric, I can just drop it off to you when I go and drop off the other meal if you want, so you don't have to leave. That. Do a smaller one for Finn. And then Brando Dio. More that is, right? Yeah, there's an entire bag. I'll just wash it up Perfect. for us after. Yep. When we get back. Or however she goes. You want to keep going yeah, with that? Okay. Brand's not gonna have No, that's why I just did a small one. Okay, he's picking up the waifu right now. He says, "Guys, I'm just gonna have a taste of this tomato sauce." Okay. What time does it be there? It'd be at the house by five, right? At five, yeah. So I can be at your house at like 5.15-ish. There's a fork for the feta. That's how the sauce is looking right now. Really nice and thick. I haven't added really any salt yet, except for the onions, so I'll do that now. You gotta get the feta out. Gotta get the feta out? Yeah. That's a good chunk. Maybe a little more. Nope. The fat uh, some will crumble with you. Okay, I'm gonna finish seasoning up the sauce so that I can blend it and then that will come off. This is your moment. Yeah, where's Mish? Also, hello, ZB Markles. We uh, would say mostly speak English here, so I'm sorry if no one understands you. But hello. Hello. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Yes. Como esta? Esta bien? <laughs> That's about all I know. So don't expect anything else, okay? Yes, Wilson, you got yourself a Lloyd pan. Time to make pizza, lasagna, all of the good things. Shepherd's pie. Okay, so those are good. 
packed up that goodness. I'm gonna mix in this stuff. I'm just gonna co-mingle the rest of this veg for us just in a bowl for now. Also, the tomato sauce is gonna taste different after it's blended because the tomato, right? Or sorry, the onion. The sweetness of the onion will get distributed more throughout. I would say that's a salad. Let's get this up so that we can blend the sauce together. But really nice veggies. Like, look how juicy those tomatoes were. Whoa. That's kind of wild. That. We're almost there. And then we still have to do the dressing. I just need to get the boiling water pot for the pasta on, and then we can make the dressing. Yeah, there's a bucket of feta. How much was the bucket again? Uh, $15. $15 for the bucket of feta. There's our sauce, saucy sauce. Unplug this. It's up there. Use the mini pro. You are my idols. Whoa. Yeah, you were graced by the bucket of feta. Graced by its presence. This is mine. This is what I bought. I actually originally bought it for culinary school. It was like one of my first big purchases. So like industrial brand, but small scale for home use. It's almost too powerful, honestly. Ranch dressing. I mean, that's not what we're going to dress it with, but that would still be good on all that vegetable mix. All the way down to low. Oh, if you want, you can just go grab the fresh basil from the fridge here. It's in with the, I think, green onion. I'll blend some of that in too. Thanks for trying the cookies as well. I thought I would give them five of those just for this size. They're a bit smaller. So this is where you blend in any fresh herbs that you want to flavor the sauce. I like basil at the end. Adds a nice freshness. Yeah, it's already 4.15. So right away the meatballs will be going into the oven too. Thank you. I didn't find regular basil. Ooh, yeah, mint could be good too. Just in like the smallest amount, Nike. So this stuff will be a bit stronger. And then we can also do like a nice chiffonade, a thin slice of this, or even just tear some basil leaves after. Eric, are you getting an order of cookies as well? Paging Sam Hyrule, would you also like some cookies in your life? And now just press those in before we start blending. Otherwise you'll splash. Way we go. Oh, the car Nike is freaking awesome. It has been so enjoyable so far. Okay, sounds good, Deuter. 
Yeah, we probably won't be here if you get come back. Yeah. Bye, Nike. He's heading out soon to go do laundry in a bit. And like, we can leave the basil a bit chunky. Whoa. It's okay to see it in there. And now let's taste. You can use the back of this spoon. Oh, that's getting good. A bit more salt. I might do just a very small pinch of sugar. It's like almost there for the sweetness I'm looking for, but not quite. If you wanted to go like natural sweetener, you can go honey, but like I'm literally just doing a pinch. That's it. Maybe a tablespoon. <laughs> it's actually bigger than the other car. For like comfort wise. And so then this will just stay hot on the side. I will just ladle this. Do we want to keep this spaghetti separate? By itself, just like buttered no. or oiled. No, I didn't need the sauce and you don't need the sauce and meatballs. Okay, that's what I was thinking as well. That way, the sauce starts to absorb into the noodles on the way we on the way there. Yeah. And likewise, it'll start. It'll keep the meatballs moist. Hold this for a moment, please, while I unplug it. Just don't want it drip. There's an arrow, it's actually like opposite Open. way. Okay. Just sometimes we go the other way. Always coat the nudes. What meat did we go with? Not, right Not yet, it got too hot. We did, like for the meatballs you're saying, Wilson, two thirds pork shoulder, one third beef tenderloin trim. Can you leave the pot up there if you want, or no? No. Oh, because you're saying for the water? water? Mm -hmm. Just put it on top of the oven is the warmest spot. Okay. With the lid. Okay. Next up, hot water for a boiling pot for the pasta. Is, I think I'll do the white one. Thank you. Go fill this up with hot water and we'll season it so the noodles aren't bland. Welcome to Kate's Italian Kitchen. <laughs> oh yeah, wait for cookie snacks. Go, 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 go. It's go time. Go, go, go. Sometimes you gotta be your own cheerleader. This is where we ramp up the cooking part of stream. But really all the hard part's done. Sauce is ready. We just gotta cook the noodles, bake the meatballs. And just make a quick vinaigrette.
<laughs> nice balls. Oh yeah, I unplugged it. It's a three. Okay, now you're heading out. And yes, thank you. Thank you for hoarding your points and being a lurker. We appreciate that. Salt. How much salt should we put in pasta water to season it before we boil? It should literally taste like the ocean. If you've never tasted the ocean or any seas, it's like a very, very salty water. And that helps the noodles from being bland afterwards. You don't want bland noodles and then perfectly seasoned sauce. That's what happens, Mish. Yeah, you're not wrong. Maybe that's part of the flavor. <laughs> Last time we did that, it took forever. I think that'll go better. Okay, let us just take a peek at the recipe for the salad. For the vinaigrette. Parsley, basil, oregano. You can put garlic if you want. Red wine vinegar, olive oil. Salt, pepper, honey. Yeah, I'm down with that. It says 12 minutes on that for boiling time. I, that's what I was like, usually it's eight. Usually it's like eight minutes to boil spaghetti. Fish do more than that in the ocean, Bob says. Uh. <laughs> okay, our herbs, we're just gonna hand chop. 12 minutes for pasta. Okay. Let's just hand chop the herbies. Little bit of basil. All the small leaves will leave, leave, will leave the small leaves. <laughs> that was hard to say. For just picking, just pick little bits over at the end for garnish. So that'll be enough. And I'm also picking off any that are just not, not very nice looking anymore. They got a bit bruised. Save that to the side. No ranch dressing. If you bring an Italian salad with ranch dressing to an Italian's home, I don't know if they'll let you in. Do a little bit of time and then that's it. We leave the sage and rosemary out of this for sure. Okay, pick this. Hello, Knight of M's. Hello, Evan. It's Evan Evan. It's Evan Evan. The Evan with the Kim. Hello, Evan with Kim. We know them, chat. <laughs> These are real life humans, not just internet humans. They're part of the Matrix though. Yes, they are still part of the Matrix, that's right. <laughs> Knight, Knight Totems. That's actually hard to say. We're just making up a little bit of dressing for the salad that we made today. Meatballs are almost ready to go in the oven and we got our pasta water boiling. We're coming up to a boil for the spaghetti. So we're gonna stack all these up, basically make like a basil, basil blunt. We're going to roll it up. Roll, roll, roll. It's going to be so good. The cookies are fantastic. Sounds like I tried those and they're good. Nothing else matters. Cookies are good. Yeah, please try my sauce. I think it turned out good. I really like... Didn't do much effort in that one. Good. Love to hear it. So yeah, we'll do like a chunky herb vinaigrette. For the salad. Cookie, you're still here. Good. Everyone's getting ready for food. Do that. So I'm just going to shake the dressing up to bring it together. 
It's okay, Chris. I mean, you should have, you know this. But next time. Just bunch this up. It's like the smallest little bit of parsley. That's perfect. Harsh stream. Oh, we have fun here. You'll you'll fit right in. Don't even worry. We're like one big happy crazy family here. Boom, boom, boom. Basil, thyme, parsley. What did she say? Red wine vinegar. Which I do like to use that in this type of vinaigrette. And then now, now that we're bringing together the vinaigrette, I always start with the acidic portion first. So whatever vinegar you're using or even lemon juice, if you like that. Mish is not happy. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and then once we have the acidic component of the dressing, you can balance it out with the oil, a little bit of honey, stuff like that. You need to make quite a bit. Usually I do like almost half and half vinegar to oil. We need enough for like at least like seven, eight salads. The honey, I think I can just microwave this bottle, right? If it's crystallized a bit, there's nothing metallic I don't see on it. I'm scared. Is this allowed? What if we just take the lid off? I'm scared of it, it like exploding. See, this is what I'm talking about. Maple? Okay. I thought that was a hot commodity. We have honey, but I don't think anybody would be happy with it using it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they would. Okay, so I'm going to do a mix of grapeseed oil and olive oil. And then, nice thing about this, the oil is going to float above the vinegar. so that you can dial in the ratio that way. Like I said, about half and half. But I find if you go straight olive oil for dressings, it's just very strong flavor. Boom. A Little bit of maple syrup to shake in there. And then we'll do some salt and pepper and maybe a little bit of dried oregano. You've used that three places today, dried oregano, in the meatballs, in the sauce, now in the dressing. Dranks? We got dranks? Maybe later. It is 4.30 now. Why'd you say yes like that? Oh, okay. It sounded like you were a bit stressed. Pinch of salt. Boom. Put the lid on and shake it. You had a boba? What kind? What kind of boba? Oh, I want that. Hi, Mighty Quill. How are you? That's like emulsified together nicely. Lift this up. Let's have a taste. 
Just scrape this lid off. Mmm, mango boba. Yeah, yeah. That looks good. Not like the nicest color just because of the red wine vinegar, the way that it combines with the oil. But good flavor, I'm gonna say. Need a bit more maple syrup. And maybe a little bit more salt. Getting mostly like the red wine vinegar on the palate first. And then as soon as we add like sweet and salty, that should bring out the rest of the flavors. Mmm, spicy beef saute, yummo. Well, I hope your day gets better, Quill. Your friends call you Boba because your last name starts with A. So you're Bob A. He's a Boba. That's our Bob. Boom, scrape that off again. One more taste. And then we can distribute this in smaller containers. Mmm. Way better than the first taste. Yum. And when you get like some of the herbs in with it too, that's good. Okay. Away with this stuff. That's how you make a quick dressing, guys. I literally can't bring myself to buy homemade dressings anymore. Kate cannot. Need like six dressings on this side. How am I this good at 30 years old? I think it has to do with like the amount of hours I worked in kitchens, Chris, and like the restaurants and what restaurants I've worked in. Okay, I'm gonna uh, be right back. Just gonna take a really quick bathroom break so I don't have to do this again before we finish. Backity back. Yeah, I'm 50 years old in man hours, Game Brain says. You're not even wrong. And then I was also like thinking, <laughs> I was just taking my bathroom break. It's like I literally cook seven days a week, dude. Cook Monday to Thursday in like the restaurant scenario with you. 
And Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm learning more stuff on this side. So like not a lot of people are that committed either. So now distribute this while it's all emulsified. more herbage in that one and then the rest of that is for us very committed that's it right like I'm just committed to the trade game brain early home life made you okay in the kitchen exactly yeah like I really do love it okay four Five, six lids. Water is about to boil. This is perfect. It's 437. Meatballs are cooking along, looking great. Ooh, nice scoots and hi. What movie did you see? Saw Batman? Amazing. Yeah, Doggo achieved redemption. She did. Okay, so these three, four. That's for my bro and his partner. Can bring those over. Bring this other tray of meatballs. Look at those. Into it. Okay, wipe this up. Wipe off the board so that we can work there. Going forward. I think next up, we'll probably lay out the containers for plating. Done with this knife. So we're gonna do one container with sauce and meatball. This container is not gonna pass. She is cracked. Definitely gotta watch that. That would have been bad. Not good. Um, why is there tomato sauce all over the trunk? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What are the smaller containers for? Just extra? The black ones, Sam? Must must be. Probably from when you're doing the cookies. Okay. Yeah. That's where we're at, guys. Are we almost boiling? Or are boiling? Yeah. Hello from Australia. I'm from Canada. Welcome in. You're kidding me. I love that username. Hope your day is well. I'm just going to go get some more water. And thank you for the follow as well.
Hydration station. Ooh, and while I wait, I will grate some Parmesan cheese for sprinkling. Then I think I have some parsley too. A pinch of parse from yesterday. Little garnish. Mmm, game brain. Chicago has a regional grocery chain called Jewel, and the deli has some of the best white chocolate macadamia cookies out there. Okay, that's that. That's for Blando Dio. Switching that to a ladle. Can I please have the cheese grater? Left, 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 left. Thank you. And thank you, Blood Oak. Friend, you've gifted 13 subs to the channel already? Welcome in your kitchen, me. Yep, just a fine grate to sprink. And we ground the meat. So one entire pork shoulder, fresh ground, and then I mix that with some beef tenderloin trim from yesterday's Wellington adventure. Yeah, welcome to the kitchen crew, your kitchen me. Enjoy your ad-free viewing, your sub badge, all of the emotes that we have for tier one subs. Now part of the kitchen crew, and it's your duty to spread the deliciousness. Yeah, Blood Oak knows. No problem, Kate. Look at this parm, though. I'm in love. Cracked it open fresh today. 30 months aged. When it smells fruity and cheesy, that's when you know. Oh, water's boiling. We're up. Just a grape. Sam always does this trick with the boiling pot. A little bit of oil or butter helps it from boiling over. <laughs> Cookie, I went through so much palm last night, but it was so good. I love that. I actually went through quite a bit of this today. And so get this, guys. What did I price it at? 20 bucks. We did 20 bucks for the main course this week. Is that wild? Like, to me, that is so cheap. There's no way that you could get this made at any Italian restaurant where we are at. Like, having all of it done by scratch. Done with this. Our joke when you go to an Italian place is it just leave the block at the table. <laughs> I love it, Scooter. Tell me when. They just like, keep going. Just <laughs> <laughs> hey, stay there. Yeah, 2240 just for the parm alone. Well, we didn't use the whole wheel though. Perfect. Perfect. 
that parsley. It's gonna be good. Use all of that up for sure. What did you forget to mention? Message Ms. me the day of. I hope there's no sesame in anything because I'm deathly allergic. That should be something that you tell me when you order the food. No sesame. There isn't. These are the reasons why I get stressed when I cook. It's literally that. Like, I've always thought if you have an allergy, it is your own responsibility to tell people that are cooking for you. You can't make that assumption that they know. By the way, I'm a vegetarian. Okay. Yeah, we can do it this way. Just do like a double stack up. Go boom, boom. The This is for the pasta you're doing? Yeah. Should I do the sauce pot here? Sure. For me to pull from? I'll sauce, put the meatballs in, put the pasta. Those were already ready. Okay. That's how many you're giving? I'm giving you four per person. And you have two containers of sauce. Okay. Open it up. Hot sauce. Just pour it right over, you want? top of there. You want the Parmesan on the noodles or the meatballs? Uh, I think I'll do the right. Parmesan. No, put it on the noodles. Yeah. I was going to do parsley on the meatball. Okay. Parmesan and basil on the noodles. You know that they're roasted garlic when you can clearly see the roasted garlic bits in the meatball. Fun fact, if you have a microwave, it's really good at keeping things warm. Like, don't turn it on. Just put stuff in there if you're trying to hold. It's a nice little chamber. Four minutes on the pasta. Yeah, on the noodles. Yeah, that's one of my favorite emotes. The Kate garlic face. Zen out in the garlics. I did okay. 
He had one of my meatballs. The husband, though. Hi, Scarlet. You're having your friends over for tacos. Won't be long, but wanted to say hi. Thank you for stopping by. Game Brain dislikes spaghettis and fettuccine style strand or flat noodles. You want the sauce pockets like the rigaton. The rigaton. Reggaeton? No, rigaton. Okay. Noodle dispersion after this. Yeah, we did really good. We even like tried the meatball before we balled them all up and then dialed in the flavor from there. My husband just gave me a bite. Okay. Yeah, for sure, Scarlet. We have Sotos coming in from Greece. Hello, welcome in. I'm not Italiano. Mmm. Mmm, the meatball with the sauce. I grew up with a lot of Italian friends, though. And I've been to Italy twice. Yeah, twice. I was like, did I go three times? No, just twice. I will sauce here and then pasta on top. Is that the plan? That's good, guys. Two ladles of sauce for the spaghetti. That's why we made one big pot. Cause it's gonna soak it up a little on the drive over. And so then we'll send Samo on his way. I'll just tell the lady who she's expecting today. And then I'll be here finishing up the last couple things. <laughs> I'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, why is it on video? Crazy. Go from this way. Boom, boom, boom. We're cooking. That's the sauce pot. Yeah, don't forget oregano. I've used it in three places already today in the dinner. In the meatballs, in the tomato sauce, and in the vinaigrette for the salad. How was that, Karsis? Like you're asking my traveling? It was absolutely amazing. The first time I was in Italy, I was still in high school. We went for our soccer academy because my coach had some contacts there. And then the second time I went on my own, I was backpacking throughout Europe. It was amazing. I like did a little food blog while I was there to, uh, so I can always look back on my experience. Okay, thank you, Scarlett. I will definitely message you later once I look at my socials. Welcome back, Scoots. It's gonna be good. We're just waiting on the pasta noodles. We loaded up the pot. Loaded. Cold here there today, Scoots. Six inches of snow. Highest high this week is 25. Yeah, we got an entire foot the other day. Game Brain wants the meatballs and the cookies. Me too, actually. 
I'm ready for all of it. How long before a cookie? So I'm just not putting my hand to my mouth at all right now. This is a thing with chefs. After we're done plating up this, then I can do more stuff for me. Can you do a to-go bag dressing salad for me, please? Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four, Do you have any paper bags? Okay, I'll check. One paper bag to rule them all. That's good. I'm here. We're steamy. We're steamy pasta. <laughs> Let's go. Small portion. What the fuck is going on here? I wish you could have seen that. <laughs> That is a uh, Kate. That's an only Sam for Kate. Also, do we just need a little bit of olive oil drizzled over this probably? Because yes. that's a sticky noodle situation. Yep. And that's not what we're about. I would next time just toss it with oil in the bowl. That's what I thought you were going to do. Throw up, put a little more sauce on top and then parcels. Sauce and the meatballs. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Literally what I do every day at work now. <laughs> A drizzle of the one gallon tin. Good thing it's cold in here because the oil is still kind of solid. Okay, so this is for someone else, or is this the bag you're taking? That's the bag for Eric. The other bag is for... Okay. Bam, bam. For Stam Hyrule? Get the flowers out of here. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, where are they? We lost the meatballs. Yeah, the sauce turned out so good today, Scoots. Uh, maybe we'll give an extra two cup of just sauce. Just, just in, in case. case. 
Whoa. Okay, and then I have to help Sam just bring this to the car quickly. And I'll come back and we'll finish everything up for us. And that's how we do our supper club streams sometimes. Feed me, Kitten says. No, Mary. Day was going good. Last load of laundry washer error. Okay, I'll be right back, guys. I'm just going to mute. So chat amongst yourself, please. I made it. Whew, just in time. There's meatballs in the oven. Okay, so I think we gotta drop pasta first. I'm just gonna put the lid back on the sauce too, just so it stays warm. I think meatballs are almost done, but we got no pasta. Yeah, can we have cookies now, mom? <laughs> We ate everything else. We ate the veggies. Let me just tempt this. Samo cranked it. Holy shnikey, those are done. Okay. I'll just turn this off. Keep them warm. Let's center up this boiling pot now and we'll cook some pasta together. Looks like we might need some more water in there as well. Cookies, mom, okay. Where did they go? Oh, there they are. Okay, cookies. Look at how steamy it is. This is wild. Steamy cookies. Look at, you can like see through them. Yeah, that looks wild. <laughs> Looks like dry ice almost. Mmm. 
They are chewy and crunchy, not too sweet. Yeah, will you mail me two dozen, Kate? Okay, just wait. I see some stragglers. And that's going to be a uh, pretty sog town, I'm assuming. So definitely clear this out before we drop any more noodles. Looks like some of the noodles actually stuck to the pot. Look where they got crisped. Just going to put those to the side. That's what happens when you put too much noodles in the pot at one time and the water cools off. It'll start to want to stick. Okay, just gonna go get a little bit more water to add into this pot. Gonna make it nice and hot. Come here, very large measuring cup. Yeah, mail me two dozen, Kate, every week. Okay, no, just kidding. Every three days. <laughs> yeah, that water in the pot just looks a bit too starchy for us to be able to cook properly. More, more, more. And I can't wait. My brother's like, it smells like a full Italian restaurant in the house. That was so good. Just put the lid on that to bring it up real quick. Have one more bite of cookie. Mmm. And then... Oh, I still have to wash up some green still, right? Thank you, Game Brain. Thank you for the 500 bitlies. That was a bit too close. Yeah, going towards the food truck fun. We're still at 92% of the way there. Mm. Yeah, those cookies aren't too sweet at all. Really nice quick bake time on it too. Okay, while we're waiting, I'll leave the basil because we can tear that up and make it look really pretty for the photo. Put the other herbs away. We got the olive oil and the spaghetti. That's what we definitely need. And then I think I'm gonna go bring over the salads really quick while we're waiting. Oh, I hope they are gonna love this meal today. I'm really happy with it. So I hope the new supper club people are as well. Okay, I'll be right back again. Like not even a minute. was waiting for someone to be like, whoa, Kate turned into a dog. This one. So we have to keep her out when we're plating other people's food, right? I'm like finishing the cooking, but now she can come back in since it's just for us. 
So we had people that did that before. Bob, when we were still on the island. Whoa, this looks wild. What is that? I'm just going to put the lid back on. So yeah, some of our supper club people on the island, they would watch the stream and then they would also save the recipes so that they could make it for themselves afterwards too. They're like, oh, this was so good. Like now I can just make it myself again because we always rotate the menu and we don't typically repeat things unless they are requested. Like things like lasagna is always something to double up on. Yeah, Eric. Stam Hyrule, so that's what he's getting a portion of everything coming over to him. Should be soon. Is there anything else happening from the lady? Nope. Everything should be good. Okay, should I give this a stir? I've never seen this in the top of the pasta pot before. That looked wild. It's cranked. It's cranked. And actually the noodles didn't even really stick together. Not being oiled. Awesome. So while we wait, why don't we get some things to plate the food on? We definitely need some plates. Uh, make sure the plate has a rim for sure. Or you can just do everything in a bowl, right? So I think that's what I'm going to do. We got one white bowl and two black wok bowls. Yeah, we share the recipes. We have like four and a half years worth of recipes on our Discord. And then every stream, if you do exclamation mark recipe in chat, that'll pull up the recipe of the day. Or recipes, we should say. Talk yourself into some milk and cookies before bed. Sounds good, Game Brain. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Going down tomorrow. Southern style shrimp and grits. First time making it on stream. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Okay, so there's that. I don't think we need anything else. Are you pumped up too, Puppers? Puppers is pumped up. Pumped up, Puppers. You've been a good girl today. It's true. I told her this week. It's like, if you want a redemption, to cook with auntie, no shenanigans afterwards. Yeah, shrimp -o. I said no shenanigans. So far, so good. Watch me walk away and the water is about to boil over. Please don't. Please do not. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, now the meatballs can go over to Australia for dinner too. Exactly. Yeah, I've never been to Australia. Always a place that I would like to visit. And they do say like Aussies, Kiwis, and Canadians are like quite similar. And I think I missed this follow earlier. It's a doggy dog world. Thanks for the follow. And yes, Mish also. <laughs> okay, are we there yet? It's about to blow, I can tell. When the lid like starts hovering. Okay, so how much, like I'm always the worst at trying to guesstimate how much pasta we need to cook. I think I'll just do like a handful. This is the pasta we're using, the brand. Giardino. This will take a few moments. So I guess while we're waiting for this to boil, we might as well wash our greens up. Fine, we'll make friends with salad. Okay, fine. That's where you're laying, that's the good spot. That's the good spot, guys. Look. The Right in front of the door. Thou shall not leave. Sharkdino. <laughs> I think I hear it. 
Come on. We can't go any higher on the temp here. This is the limit. Yeah, we crushed that. The only thing that I don't think we got for our salad was the feta. Maybe there's extra feta crumbles in the fridge, I'll check. Maybe that's where Sam will put them. Never forget the feta. I don't even know what to say right now, Mish. Okay, we're here. Whoa! Told you! So look at how the oil makes it not go over. Okay. I mean, we do have extra sauce and meatballs. Let's make sure we make enough pasta. We do like one big handful worse. I'm okay if there's extras. Like that should do it, right? One handful? Of the spaghetti. Let that soften up. Work its way into the pot. Hi, Chuck. I see you're having fun cooking again. Guys, that's Sam's dad. It looks so yummy. Thank you. Wait. Today you guys had a spit barbecue baby pig? At the neighbor's house? Or at your friend's? That sounds so awesome. Okay, so we're going to let this keep boiling now. We'll stir it every now and then. I'm just going to move it over this way. Misha's leaving. Bye! <laughs> Astra wags her tail. She's like, yes, more for me. Misha's gone. Okay, go get the other bag of greens. Then we'll wash that up for our salad. Yeah, your friend's hose. Was it yummy? Did you like it? That's like what we did before. What even is a bone fish? One more stir up. Let's pick through our greens. No trash greens allowed. Whoa, this bag is way worse than the first one we did. way freaking worse than the first one. Well, good thing we opened the other one for the other people. So it would have put me behind having to pick through all this for them. Oof, don't let that go in there. I don't like the look of that whole leaf. The Oilers game is starting! Awesome! Well, thanks for stopping by, Evan. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the show. Maybe we'll see you again. And yeah, I'll cheer for the Oilers for you, even though we don't really watch hockey anymore. We got this. Are they playing here, by the way? Is it a hometown game? Night Totems. They are nice. 
Okay, well, you guys take care. Definitely stay in touch as well. I know everyone's busy in life. But yeah, it was great to hear from you. First one with no restrictions except just mask. Ooh. Man, they're gonna be fired up then, hey? Okay, one more handful, because I know that we always like to eat a really big salad. Samo's a good veggie eater. Yeah, you too! There we go. One quick stir of the spaghetti. Get this gone. So many feta complaints. I know. I think Sam brought it back to the fridge even. I have to go grab it now. Me, oh my. Okay, just gonna rinse these up. Good doggos. Good doggo. Yeah. You know what I think she's here for? She knows the smell of the Parmesan cheese. That's why she's being so well behaved. She remembers it from the summertime. Rinse, rinse, rinse. Can't make a small salad and call it a big Italian salad. That's just not possible. Yeah, she's a cheese pepper. Excuse me. Is there good smells in there? Just hovering over the trash. What a typical dog thing to do. Spin all of the extra water off. Yeah, please. Can you roll up your sleeves and take the meat out of the cooking show? Thanks. <laughs> People were relentless today. Yeah, Misha's a feta vegan. Can we get a sleeve check in chat, please? <laughs> Oh, sorry, I blocked the fan from blowing the steam away. So steamy up in here. Go, go, go. Okay, now we can pour that out. Any of the big leaves, I usually just tear up a bit smaller so they're easier to eat. And we will do that in this bowl. Big, big salad. And Sam and I, usually, we just, like, share this. Eat half. Pass it over. Good to go. Let us see where this is at. Yes! Carbonara. Probably my top pasta dish. Like, ever. If feta will melt in it, probably not. It doesn't really have good melting qualities. Let's try a noodle. Still some crunch. Still a bit crunch. Couple moments though, and that will be good. So almost there. Oh, scoots. It was a fun day. Yeah, you did miss some entertaining stuff. <laughs> oh man. You know when it makes me giggle and shake my head. It was good. Okay, over here. All of our veggies. We're getting our veggies today, chat. Yes, we are. That is good. The dressing is here. 
So I'll just give that one more shake up. Dust, you killed the guy. Was it a trident or a brick? <laughs> Dust killed him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Brick, you killed the guy. That always just reminds me of like Anchorman. Well, we definitely made like a perfect amount of dressing. No leftovers? Love that. Next one, what I'm gonna do since this is almost ready, I think I'll just toss this extra back in the water just to heat it up really quick. We're almost there. Try one more time. Mm-hmm. That's al dente, or like basically, let's put this in. Really nice seasoning too, on the noodles. They are not bland by any means. I did make the water taste like the sea. Let that come back up and then we'll be good. La spaghetti. Oh, that's what I didn't want to happen. Don't lose the noodle. Whoa. Switch it. Let's switch to the spider. Might be safer. Boom. I think I cooked a perfect amount of spaghetti. When in doubt, just believe in yourself, chat. Just gotta believe a little bit that things will work out. If you don't think things are gonna work out, they probably won't. Get in there, you sneaky noodles. Okay, off. We're gonna pour a little bit of oil in here just to keep it from sticking. Now I can get rid of that. Watch out, girl. Watch out, girl. Just put this hot contraption to the side. bowls for plating. Let's just toss our spaghetti really quick. Doesn't get all stuck. One. Spaghetti is gonna go up in that corner. Boom, boom, boom. Hello, Cyberhawk. What kind of oil? Yeah, just olive oil. Just an extra virgin olive oil. So, do you want to be like fancy spaghetti platers? I don't know if I can. Twist it. Twist it around the tongs. And then you're supposed to like lay it out like that. <laughs> so fancy. I mean, it does actually look so good when you're able to do that though. Twist it. 
That's a Samo one. Holy. I really went for it. Huh? Mike, what are you saying right now? I'm seeing weird words together. And I'm kind of freaked out. Oh, these bulls? So we can't find these bulls anymore. I tried to find them for Dust Pirate as well. He wanted to maybe get them for Christmas. They don't exist in the world. Holy, I even did an insane amount of spaghetti for myself. But yeah, these are not cast iron. They're just like a ceramic wok shaped black bowl that let's uh let's sauce next and then we'll do the meatballs <laughs> i don't even know what mike was trying to say Yeah, the way that the sauce just like pours over, I think we do a double. Where'd the spaghetti go? Gone. This ain't your mom's spaghetti and meatballs, but it might be your grandma's. I'm gonna go a little less sauce on mine just for like photo purposes. We can always add more after. I would like to see some of the noodles. Yeah, they're not cast iron, they're just ceramic. Trust me, I know because I've seen about 40 of these being broken in a restaurant. So then we ended up with literally three left and those are the three we now have. So opening a new restaurant, servers literally broke 40 of these bowls in the first month. Like you think I'm exaggerating, I'm not. So then you can't really run a menu in a 150 seat restaurant with three bowls to plate with. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, well, nothing to do with them. So does someone just take them home? They ain't care. Uh, we got them from a place called Putty Foot. But yeah, I've looked, I've searched on that site and it doesn't exist. So here's our roasted garlic Parmesan meatballs. Fresh ground pork, beef mixture, whole cloves of roasted garlic, a little bit of egg, some oregano. Actually do Samos first. But yeah, no filler in these meatballs either. I never do breadcrumb. Especially if I'm gonna serve it with some pasta noodles. I just don't see the point of adding more filler because I just find it takes away from the really nice meat flavor. Doggo's like, can I have a meatball now? She's asking me with her eyes and I'm still like, no, you can't. That, that there, put these two to the back. <laughs> Mountain man, yeah, you can only usually say that if you were a server before. So next up, Parmesan cheeses. We need more, right? More parm, please. Eric, you got it? Nice. He says it smells good. Can't wait to dig in. I hope you enjoy, my dude. Pinch of parse. Color. Little bit of freshness. 
That means Samo is back soon. Perfect timing, really. That's how a day goes by. And then just a little bit of basil for us extra. The filler, yeah. Roasted garlic and oregano. So usually I just like tear the basil leaves. Just got so quiet. Now that literally everything is off in here, it's so quiet, it's almost eerie. Like working in a kitchen, I don't know if anyone else in here has worked in a kitchen before, but all you hear all day is like you're listening to the hood vents. There's always something running. So when it's actually quiet, it's kind of a weird feeling. It's like, is something wrong? No, that's just what silence feels like. Such a satisfying thing. Oh, I don't want to put that basil butt in there. No basil butts. Yeah, you made it in time for dinner. We have another Eric coming in. Okay, I'm just going to quickly bring one of these to my bro. Now I can't even remember which one had more pasta because they look the same. I think it was this one. Let's zoom in and I'll be back momentarily to try this with you guys. Yeah, that's towards the end of the shift. Let's go. Come on, pup. Okay, I just had to mute it because I wasn't sure if it was going to cut out. I'm here. He's so pumped. My bro. He just like takes the bowl and like his hand goes down from the weight. I'm like, yeah, there's a bit of weight there. Careful. There we go. I was like, why is my camera smudged? That's enough. Let's eat. Let's eat. Mish, I didn't even grab the feta for the salad. Probably not going to see us eat the salad on stream. Let's put Samos here. Keep it warm in there. Mish isn't even here. That's right. Bye. <laughs> Kimmers, thank you. Okay, so... We cut into this with our fork. Yes, we can. Can we see the juices in there still? Yes, we can. That looks good. Okay, I'm gonna just eat that. I'm making a mess already. Mmm. 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 <laughs> okay, meatball on its own can just be a meal. Let's see how the sauce and the spaghetti is. Well, I still have a bit of meatball in my mouth. This is going to be a big bite. Commit. Commit to it. Mmm. Mmm. All of that together. Tomatoes like sweet. Get the roasty like onion flavor in the sauce, which is really nice. Any roasted garlic nubs that like fell off the meatball in the sauce. Very good. Just grated some cheddar. Nice. And no, no request on raid yet, Eric. So you can go for it if you want since we're almost at that point. Nice cook on the noodles. They're not soggy by any means. 
Yeah, super flavorful sauce. And like if I look in the bottom here, you know you made a good tomato sauce when it's not just like all runny, right? It's got body. Plus the noodles probably soaked up a bit of it too while it sat there. Oh, we finished the rest of the dish. Victoria, a gaming raid? Sure. I always love to find new people on Twitch. Thank you for the suggestion, dude. Jim Bob, how heavy do we think the meatballs are? Probably like two ounces, if that's how you want your weight measured out. What would that be in grams? There's what, 28 grams in an ounce? Almost 60 grams. 50 kilogram meatballs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's delicious. This is what else we made today. Big Italian salad. We got the other one walking in. And then we also made these today. White chocolate macadamia cookies. The Sam a Sam. Yours is just in there. I don't know if you want to reheat it for a couple moments. It's a bit I like, it's just warm. I was like, got to tell Keelan about the timer I have on my phone. For meeting balls. Yeah. That was the first thing I checked. And they were done. <laughs> I was like, oh, oven's off. The cookies, please eat one. I already ate half of one. I can have some more bite skis. Hey, Eric. More light. More light. Balls and noodles tonight. With sauce. <laughs> it was a stream, guys. You know we're at the end now. So. How was Lady? Never met Lady. Oh. Never met her husband. Oh, so I sent my husband, so she sent hers. I love that. Yep. <laughs> Callie Yugen. Hello. Welcome. He was, he was slightly confused on what was happening. Yeah, he's like, "What? who are you and what is this? Yep. You're like, hi, I have your dinner. Yep. <laughs> That's even better. Oh, no. <laughs> Sam says, my wife likes your balls in her mouth. Thank you. Wait, what is happening right now? It's true, though. Like, she is eating my meatballs right now. <laughs> Bob, what happens at this point if we get in between Sam and his plate just for science? Probably death. You ever watched Elden Ring or Dark Souls? <laughs> you died. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm -mm. It's good together, hey? Happiness in a plate. Good stream, friends. Thanks to everyone who hung around for like literally almost six hours. Kudos to all of you. Thank you for the support. You had to have that one too? Oh, okay. gonna get straight wrecked that game is something else i played elden ring for 30 minutes and i've died three times <laughs> that's about right not bad it's only half a subathon speaking of i think that's coming up next weekend again it is. holy shnikey are you ready blood oak you better catch up on your sleeps <laughs> Okay, Eric requested a raid for us. Just go into the queue, get that set up. We're gonna crush this bitch. Yeah, we just need to put the feta on there. It'll make it better. Feta makes it better. 
you guys are so much better watching start to finish compared to what? <laughs> Wait, what, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> I says pardon? Victoria. Okay, I think I got this right. It has been started. Yes. Okay, friends. Thanks for the wonderful day. We had lots of fun hype trains. Thanks for the gifted subs, the bits. I don't think we got any donations though today, but we also got some good resubs too. Longer term ones, 26, 20 months. My dad did 44 today. Insane. Oh yeah, watching the whole stream. We always like let you guys see the whole way through and then we always make sure we taste it because like how do you know the food is good if you don't eat it together? There's no TV magic here. No TV magic here and I will legitimately tell you if it's not good. If I'll be like, Ugh, If it's trash? Guys, don't make this. Trash. Like I'll seriously say that. So hope to see everyone tomorrow. We'll be back again at 11 a.m. Pacific. And yeah, thanks for the mods today. We had a kind of funny stream. It was a fun one. So huh? thanks for your work, Dust. Yeah, while you were sleeping. Oh. <laughs> we will be back tomorrow cooking live on Twitch. Shrimp and grits. Never made it before on stream. Very excited to try that out and learn together with everyone. Let's go see Victoria. Apparently she is a gaming streamer. Not sure what she is streaming, but I'm excited to spread the deliciousness. So let's go. I'm about to get cut off. Okay, Sammy, say bye. 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 <laughs> there is more. I wasn't sure if you.